Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 11 of Caravan of Consciousness. And today I've got uh, my good friend, Brian Stabley. A lot of you will know Brian from his um, many channels. He's, he's um, got YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, um, Rockfin, Facebook, uh, probably a few others I've forgotten about, but he's all over the place. And he's um, the main guy to go to if you want to know about the Mandela effect, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, Brian first started his research back in around, I think it was 2010, and he was um, researching that um, event that happened in September in 2001. So we'll touch on that a little bit later as well. So welcome, Brian. Thank you. Oh, Thanks and for I forgot to say the date. We're pre-recording this, but I'll try and get it up in the next few hours after we finish. But today here is Thursday, the 4th of April, 2024. So if anyone comes across this at a later date, um, that's what we're doing today. And it's still the third just for Brian. So I'm actually a time traveler. I'm in the future over here in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So welcome, Brian. Hi. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Um, so what I wanted to do today, first of all, I want to get a little bit of um, background on your growing up, like um, how you went in school. Were you always a little bit of... Um, a rebel rouser or going against the grain and, you know, anti-authoritarian like a lot of us in this movement or, you know. I was, def I was definitely a rebel rouser. Yeah. So if you want to give us a little bit of a background <laughs> as to your childhood and things like that and, and how you went in school and, and what you actually thought about this place when you were quite young, like, you know, reality, what what, what were your take on it? Uh, growing up in like the elementary school years, uh, I liked school, I think. Uh, I seemed to enjoy it. But once I got to uh, junior high school, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, I started to just really hate school. I hated being in there all day. Um, and I think a lot of that is many of us because let's face it, school for the most part, you know, I know there could be some exceptions and special schools and whatnot. I'm saying not seeing everything, but the public school system, they're not really teaching you how to think for yourself at all, how to critically think and how to challenge things. They're just teaching you to learn what is accepted knowledge and, it, you know, whether it's real or not and just regurgitate it. And um, that probably didn't sit well with us on the inside, but I, I'm not going to say I thought like that when I was a kid because I didn't. Um, it just didn't jive with me. And uh, I was kind of rebellious. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't like a huge punk. I mean, some people might say I was, but I wasn't really like, <laughs> I wasn't like a, you know, uh, anything crazy, but I was like a, you know, mischievous teenager and uh, lots of arguments with the teachers and stuff and suspended many times from school. And uh, in fact, when I went to get onto high school, I wanted to go to the vocational school. My parents wouldn't let me. And that's, uh, I don't know if it's the same there, but in America, that's like a school where you go to class one week and then the next week you go to shop and you actually learn a trade and it alternates. So it's much more interesting than a regular high school. Yeah, they don't um, actually have that I, here, but they've got um, like school training, like um, uh, to to learn to be a carpenter or a plumber or whatever they do. I think they still have to go to school um for a certain amount of hours and then they might peel off in the afternoon and do a couple of hours of, of the um the trade school yep yeah i wanted to do that bad my parents would have let me I went to the regular high school i hated it and then um i ended up being a sophomore three different years in a row at three different high schools in three different cities um so it just wasn't working for me and uh i ended up dropping out when i was 16 but I ended up getting my GED uh, just several months later at the same time as my original graduating class anyway. So I got to skip a couple of years of it, basically. Um, and then, you know, fast forward a little bit, like, so also as a kid, as far as what I thought about this reality, uh, something that I think is probably pertinent is I definitely had some what I would call supernatural experiences. Yes, uh, I wanted I wanted to go into that. I actually had that on the list to ask you about that. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I lived in a house for a long time that I am 100% convinced was, for lack of a better term, haunted. I mean, I don't know what that is. Is it ghosts? Is it people from another dimension? Is it demons? I mean, people have all different ideas about what it is. I always considered it to be ghosts. That's what I would knew it as. You know, I'm open to the other ideas now about Yeah. what it might have been, uh, but definitely something not of this material realm. Uh, it was definitely present in that house. I experienced it. My mother experienced it. Uh, and one night, uh, about 10 of my friends experienced it. We had a huge, uh, huge thing. I mean, if you want me to tell the story a little bit, I can. I mean, the house used to be uh, an orphanage, you know, and upstairs in the attic, there were like these beds where the orphans used to sleep still. Like this shit was still up there. Um, and some of them had died there or whatever. And I don't know how much of the, the entire stories I heard was valid and what was hearsay and whatnot, but I do know that it was really an orphanage before. Um, and just one night, like my, my parents never let anybody sleep over. Like kids have sleepovers, just my cousins, my, my two cousins, uh, were allowed to sleep over whenever they wanted, but none of my friends until like one night, my parents let people sleep over. I was probably 14, 15, maybe 13, Yeah, maybe 13 or 14. And uh, I knew that the attic was haunted. I've always heard stuff up there. My mother had always heard stuff. I was literally very scared to walk past that door. And I, my bedroom's on the second floor. The attic's the third. And to go to the hallway to the kitchen, many times I'd go to the other staircase because I didn't want to walk by the attic. I fucking hated it. Um, and anyways, one night I have this big sleepover. And I had like 10 friends staying over and I was playing a game on Nintendo. And I remember exactly what game it was. I must've been a little younger. I was probably like 12 or 13. Um, it was a car. I warriors two. And so old this was For people that are familiar with that game. I was playing the game on Nintendo and like the static started coming across the screen, which was really weird because it's not connected to anything. It's a video game console into the TV. It's not like a getting an antenna signal or there's no reason for that to happen. Um, so we thought that was weird. And then, you know, a few of my friends knew the stories about the ghosts that I would tell. And they're like, <clears throat> we're going to go upstairs and we're going to go F with the, with the orphans and say, you know, I don't really think that's a good idea, you know? Um, so anyways, they went up there. And all of a sudden you hear two screams and then you hear boom, 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 boom. You hear three sets of footsteps instead of two. So you hear them running, running, and then something chasing them is what you hear and them screaming. Yeah. They come running and they're screaming about green eyes, green eyes. I'm like, all right. I mean, I, you know, I certainly believe them, but they were like really panicky about it. Um, they said we saw green eyes flying around up there and then later on it was time for us to go up to my room and I had like a huge California king size waterbed there was like seven or eight of us laid across sideways a couple people on the floor we're, we're just chatting you know we're having a big sleepover and uh, these two guys are like we're gonna go do it again <laughs> right and I'm like I, I couldn't believe that they said that So it didn't take long before they went up there. They The same screaming. two guys. Same two guys. Wow. They went up there. They're screaming. They run. Now we're on the second floor. And said so we were on the first floor. Now we're right under the attic because we're on the second floor of my room. And and they come running down and screaming. But this time they brought that stuff with them. And Oh, we no. saw these two. I'm not going to say they had like eyeballs. So you could call them green orbs or you could call them green eyes, but they weren't really, they were more ovalish, like eye shaped than, than circular. And that they were in my room just flying around and we observed it. And then we observed it literally go fly right into one kid that was there laying down. He sat up, started tweaking out physically. We had to like really try hard to try and restrain him. And then basically everybody ran out of the house and most of those people never ever returned to that house. I had to live this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was just one story. There were other things that let, led up to that, but that was the one really, really big one. So I definitely had uh, experiences with things where I know that there's more than the material realm. Um, 
it doesn't mean I believe every ghost story you hear out there or anything because it, it, it's hard to believe things that it just, it's just like when we're going to talk about Mandela effect in a little while, like some of the biggest Mandela effects are the personal ones, but it's very hard to prove that because they're personal ones, you know? Um, yeah. But just like I know the Mandela effect is real, I know that there's more than this physical realm. And sometimes that stuff presents itself. You know, you, we, I don't know what that exactly is. Is it, is it ghosts? Is it dead people from the past? Is it, you know, uh, people from another dimension? I mean, I just don't know. But I know I experienced that. Um, yeah. So I had that growing up. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. How scary. But, Tom, yeah, no, I definitely... Um... Uh, I'm on the same, you know, with you. Like it's, um, it can be all different things. It can be uh, souls that are stuck here after they've passed that have had a traumatic death. Because uh, I'm in the moment, I'm studying soul centered healing hypnosis. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a modality which is, um, it does touch on past life regression and also getting in touch with the, the client's higher self. But at the front end of the, um, uh, this modality it's actually entity release because everybody has some form of attachments um, whether because we've all gone through traumas in our life whether it's accidents or emotional trauma or you know things like that so and whenever we've let our guards down and our um, energy bodies are in a low frequency we open ourselves up and things can get in so it can be people that have passed on that see our light and they're scared so they attach to our energy and follow us around and it can also be you know demonic forces and things like that so there's a wide range of, of energies so I just wonder about that poor guy that the orb went into him so you know you actually saw it attach physically to him so I wonder if he's ever um you know, managed. I mean, to I saw her. I, yeah, I saw him plenty of times after that. And he was fine. It was, but, but I don't know if he was dealing with something. He wasn't talking about it, you know? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. And a lot of the times too, we don't, we're not even aware. It's only when you become aware of th these sorts of subjects that you realize that you can be manipulated by other forces, you know, and we've all had times in our lives where we've had intrusive thoughts and we've gone, oh, my God, why did I think that? That's not me. I would never think that. That's horrible. And that's usually, you know, darker forces that are at play that are messing with our energetic fields or they're attached to us in some way. So, but, yeah, I'm fascinated yeah. about this subject. So, yeah. So, all right, so going forward, so um, so you got through school and all that sort of stuff. Now, didn't you want to do a career in radio? Were you, were you studying to being in radio or, or sports announcer yeah. or something yeah. i um in the you know i was really really heavily into uh you know the sports and the boston sports scene and i was really really into uh sports podcasts in the earlier days sports radio in the earlier days it's all huge now wrestling podcasts in the very early days um and i that's what i wanted to do i wanted to be a sports broadcaster on like talk radio like sports talk radio because i you know i would listen to that stuff all the time and i was just like i, I could i could definitely do this and i was knowledgeable about it now i know all of that's a lot of useless information um but um that actually kind of brought me into where i'm at now so he, you know i i really wanted to do a bad so basically uh and we'll get to 9 11 in a little bit but you know like when that day happened you know uh, I bought the whole thing and I was like this, I was very patriotic and brainwashed and I believed everything the news said. I thought they were telling me the truth. I will say for basis for everybody, I never bought into politics and I never bought into religion. And I think that's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I never went down any of that. I never had to dig out of that brainwashing. I never believed in any of that. Uh, no offense to anybody that is you know, is a religion or whatever, but that's just not for me. I don't need politics or religion or anything to try and tell me how to think. I think for myself. Um, but anyways, I believed it. Uh, I believed all the other stuff. The news was floating out. I used to call my friends on the next hell phone in the morning and belt out the national anthem to them. That's how bad it was. Um, and in 2005, I decided to go to uh, a really well-known school in, in New England, Connecticut School of Broadcasting, uh, to try and pursue that career uh, in sports broadcasting. And, uh, you know, I passed that with flying colors. I did really, really well. Um, and I got a job at uh, 
radio station called WGIR AM 610 in Manchester, New Hampshire. And I was producing the Red Sox games for them. Um, not as the main producer, like if you watch the Red Sox in Boston, they were an affiliate station that would carry the game and have their own announcers for the, the, the local New Hampshire people. And I would be working in tandem with them and doing all the production work. Um, but I did it for like a year and a half or so. And the pay was just not even worth the gas money to drive up there. It was like a 45 minute drive and it just wasn't worth it. Um, but I learned a lot about audio editing and obviously all sorts of stuff to do with, with broadcasting. Um, then it just kind of, I got into other things, went back to just being a normie. Um, after I worked that radio station, I don't remember what I did for a job next, uh, probably a restaurant or something. And then, um, in 2010, that's when it all kind of changed. Uh, I was wanted to learn more about what happened in 2001. So I went on Netflix and searched it. And like we all do, when we first start to open our eyes to the world and what it really might be and the perceptions, we all look at things that are now looking back, obvious gatekeeping and misdirection. And, you know, that's the first road I went down. But it opened my eyes. And what I saw was a movie called World Trade Center with Nicolas Cage. And uh, what was in that movie was depicting something different than the official story. And the difference was when these firefighters were trapped uh, in the elevator shaft in this movie. It's a motion picture. It's not portrayed as a documentary. But it's still having that effect on you. Um, and, you know, the, the moral of the story of that movie was they heard explosions before the plane hit. So now they're sending you down this rabbit trail, right? And this is what they do when you start to open your eyes. Here they are with all these things for you. So that made me think, wow, this that's really crazy. Because then I'm like, what if that is true? And then you start to look on YouTube when you could actually find things on YouTube back then. And in other places, there were a lot of forums for that topic all over the place. Nobody does forums and websites anymore. Everybody's all centralize into certain social media platforms and that's all by design i've said that for many many years um but when you start to look you actually see real and i'm doing air quotes for anybody listen audibly real footage the firefighter interviews from that day and they're saying the same thing that they heard bombs going off before the plane hit the towers and blah blah blah, 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 blah. so this is like some mind blowing stuff. And, and I know it affects everybody over the world. New York City is only like 200 miles from where I live. I mean, to think that they lied about that and they had some involvement in that in some way, uh, you know, kind of makes you feel really like, wow, that is crazy. It's like, it's like a life changing event. Um, so I started to dig a lot. And, I, you know, it was very obvious that obviously it's not the official story and the U.S. government is lying. But that's the first step. That's just the baby step. When a lot of people are still stuck there, well, we know it's an inside job. That's all we need to know. No, you guys are missing the whole the whole the kit and caboodle. Within a matter of no time, I decided, OK, I'm going to start doing radio shows about this and talking about this and doing interviews and all this. So I built my website. And I figured out how to host podcasts on my website, take phone calls, everything I do now, except no video back then. Um, and uh, I just went and I, and I started tearing apart the information of that day. And the more and more you look into it, and this is where what I have to say on it is differs so much from almost anybody you're going to hear talk about it. And it's so important. And it'll always be relevant. And it plays out all, all the time. And that is, you know, <clears throat> when you start to dig, and I'm going to be careful because I know this is on YouTube, but we can we can talk about this in depth another time for other platforms. But when you start to dig more and more, like see most people that have looked at that day at all see the Harley guy in the street given the official story about how the buildings collapsed and, you know, and then we know that's never happened in the history of the world and he's got the official thing and he, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. So think about that. You know, the Harley guy is an actor and you know that he's there working with Fox news and they're in on it. 
do you think the acting stops there? And most people really never probably even really had that thought. And when you start to dig more and more and pull more and more away, oh, it doesn't stop there. The fakery doesn't stop there. The If you look into the legitimacy of what was said to have happened to souls who have perished within alleged skyscrapers, you're going to come up pretty empty-handed. You're going to come up about 2,500 death certificates light. You're not going to have any video of thousands of people leaving there. And it goes on and on. And I don't want to go too far here with it on your channel. Um, but if you've seen what's gone on in the last four years, today's 2024. If you've seen what's gone on in the last four years, and you know it's completely illegitimate at all, like not, not legitimate at all, nothing to fear at all, not just overblown, no reason to go and get the thing because nothing was going on. You should take those same eyes now and go back and look at the event I'm talking about. And it's going to become so apparent and so obvious to you. And so many parallels right down to, this is the one thing I like to say a lot to people, one of the things we scratch our head at, how can these normies not see in the last four years? The buildings that would be taking care of the situation are empty in their own towns. Nothing's going on and you don't hear a siren for eight, the first 18 months, right? Those same types of buildings where people would have been treated in New York City on that day, in that evening, same situation. Yep. Nothing going on. So people really, and the, the reason, and we're going to get away from the day a little bit, uh, but the, like the bigger message here is when you're a normie, it's fantastic for them. You believe the 19 hijackers. You believe the globe's going around the sun. You believe in the, the dinosaurs and the evolution. And they love that. But they know that not everybody is going to buy it forever. And a lot of people are going to slip past that and start to wake up. Well, here they are with the gatekeepers. Here they are with Alex Jones and, this, and all that. But here they are with all these different rabbit trails and what they have in common all the time. Just like with the last four years, it's, it's, oh, well, you know, it's overblown, but you should still get the thing just in case. Or it was leaked from a lab. And, and all, they're all just rabbit trails of fear to lead you back into believing that something which was completely fabricated from the beginning is real and legitimate. And you should fear it somehow. And what I've watched happen with that day in September is people push all these different I crazy ideas of what happened to, the, to all the people and the contents and all this. And I'm telling you, all that stuff simply just wasn't in there. It wasn't evaporated. It wasn't nuke. It wasn't dustified. The buildings were built for that day. They were never fully occupied. And it was a big magic trick. And that shouldn't be that hard for people to understand. And the reason it's such an important message is because, you know, although I talk about the Mandela effect because it's the most fascinating and mind-blowing thing to me ever, I think it's the biggest thing ever. My initial mes message was always to show people to not live in fear, especially truthers, because truthers are addicted to fear. In fact, from what I've seen in the last several years, truthers are more in fear than normies. Think about it. Next time you're at a, I, I know you know, I really want to bring up this day in September at a family function or whatever, but let's just say you overheard people talking about it. It came up somehow, 20 of your family members. Who do you think is more in fear over what they think happened on that day? The 20 people at the family function? Or the 20 truthers. Yeah. 20 truthers. Exactly. Because they're going to tell you the, the government evaporated 3,000 people with a directed energy weapon and all this freaking nonsense, all, all over fabrications. And then I've watched over the years how if people would realize that these things were fabricated, right, then they wouldn't live in fear and they wouldn't promote any of this because it's all garbage. None of it's been real. And you've been around for a long time. You know all the things that the truth has said were going to take us out hasn't happened. Nobody's kicked in my door. Nobody's stuck anything in me. Nobody threw me in a FEMA camp. I didn't die from chemtrails. I didn't die from 5G. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just saying they love the fear. I'm about no fear. And now it's beautiful that we talk about the Mandela effect which is more of a, it's totally spiritual and supernatural. And people like people that don't even want to look at it will say things like, oh, these Mandela effect people want you to stop watching media and stuff. I'm the biggest advocate to tell you to not watch the media, throw the TV out. There's no value in the media, politics. They lie to you. It's to keep you in fear. And I've been saying it since day one. 
I don't need to go and start watching the media to know if my Mr. Rogers has changed it's in my house. I'm not, you don't have to go, you could just go verify something in two seconds. Like, no. Um, so for me, after, after, uh, you know, that study in that day, and I was really down in the, in the trenches of it and doing a lot of interviews, a lot of work, dealt with a lot of gatekeepers. We don't have time to go into all of that right now. Uh, but it wore me out. Uh, at the end of 2014, I, I was so sick of the, the, uh, what's the word? Volatile, volatility. Uh, the volatile? Volatile, volatile, yeah. you know, behavior in the 9-11 circles. Yeah. Um, and again, when you, even in the, those circles, when you're talking in the way that I'm talking about uh, the media, because this is the big, the big thing. The one, the one of the big parts of my awakening is realizing that the footage of the, the flights is not real in the buildings, and that's so important because that shows that the media was involved with prefabricated footage, and then that shows me at least you should never believe anything the media says ever. It's not just the government that's lying; they're giving you a fake reality. People still believe anything. People believe that there's a convertible in space with a mannequin in it, listening to David Bowie <laughs> doing laps around the sun. Yep. Yep. I know it's you know ludicrous. I mean? It's ludicrous to think that people still believe this stuff. But there are people still out there that they're just obviously on the kindergarten level of the evolution of the soul. <laughs> That's the only yeah. thing I can come up with is um yeah, we're all on different levels and some people just are not meant to get it in this time around and they're probably going to be um, around for another 26,000 years on this wheel until they, they come, up. I think they come back and we'll get deeper into my theories on what I think this reality is and reincarnation and all that. I yeah. do think they're coming back until they learn their lesson type of thing. Yeah. Um, I would like to, I would like to, before we get into the Mandela effect, I think I need to talk about NASA a little bit because that's yeah. an important bottom that kind yeah. of came right before that and a little bit after the 9-11 if we can get into that yeah yeah go for it yep yeah so that was um what around 2014 2015 that you well came not really so no 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 i came across uh i debunked i'm not saying i debunked the moon landing because obviously many people debunked them but for myself i debunked it in my own um in 2011 i knew yep. that the moon landing was fake um and you know, I didn't get to the other stuff, the, the deep, deeper stuff you know, to like 2014. But um, after looking at what I the the footage with that day in September, in my opinion, it's all prefabricated, chopped up, live banner slapped on it. Hey, this is live newscast. All the, it's they completely control this. They're not going halfway to the moon. They're not giving you half real footage from that day. It's all fabricated. They didn't leak a video from the Pentagon showing it looked like a missile hit the Pentagon. That that's part of the script. Yeah. Okay. That they, people don't understand the power of the airwaves. They control the airwaves. And even though you think you're awake, they still control your mind with it. With that imagery, you're still controlled. You know. Um. So, anyways, knowing all that, and even by just by 2011, I was already only a year in, but I was very deep in, and I knew. I already had come to the conclusion that I've come to now about that. And somebody says to me, hey, you really need to look at the Apollo moon landing. And I said, oh, all right. Now my eyes are wide open. I'm all right. You're right. I do need to look at the moon landing. And when I looked at that moon landing, I didn't take it. Oh, it, it didn't take more than two hours to realize, well, this is absolutely uh, bogus to me. Um, and it wasn't just the footage. So I found some interesting things. So I did see the, you know, the whole box of Braille thing, like many people did, um, you know, half uh, astronauts gone wild. What's the first one? Funny thing have on the way to the yeah. moon, right? Yeah. So I saw that. Um, but the stuff that was big for me, which is interesting because it's a movie that's now Mandela affected. And it was called Dark Mission 1 and Dark Mission 2. Now the title has always been what really happened on the dark side of the moon. It's completely crazy. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, it is crazy because that's like a big part of my awakening and yeah. that, that change. This movie was old. This was a two part documentary series. That was like, it must've been made in the early eighties, maybe even the late seventies. Um, so the first part of it 
was showing like repeating backgrounds, shadow issues, uh, you know, different stuff on the surface, lighting issues, that type of thing. And I could see this is obviously a stage set. This is yeah. like no doubt about it. But then the part two got into the technological impossibilities of going to space, the spacesuits, you know, the whole the whole deal. And that's what really got me like this. There's no way. There's no way they went 237,000 miles to the moon, which, of course, I still believe that it was that far. Um, so I did a whole show in 2011, a special on it. Me and my co-host um, just tearing it apart, um, which obviously isn't hard. I mean, you can go on my website. I have images of that lunar lander I posted in 2011. I was calling it curtain rods and construction paper and all that. And so while I was doing 9-11 heavy, I was looking at the school events, bang, bang events that kept popping up. Those were all not legitimate, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. So that's going on, too, on the side. It's still heavy 9-11. I was looking at a lot of things. I was new to the conspiracies and stuff and, you know. Key is though, eventually you got to get to the pot in your growth where you're not wasting all your energy on stuff that's all lies and all that stuff is lies, you know. Yeah. But it, ta it takes time. It takes time to get through that. Um, so after the moon landing, as far as NASA goes, I started to look into satellites in space and the ISS. And by 2013, I was convinced that neither one of those were true. Yeah. Um, and then in 2014, uh, a video came across my way. And as you know, the flat earth uh, movement blew up basically in spring of 2015. So anything before that, there was very, 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 very little out there. But there was a disinformation video that came my way, recommended, of course, by YouTube. Um, and that video, actually, it's interesting because that video came out in 2010. So they were way ahead of that, you know. Um, <clears throat> and the video was a three minute video. And it showed ridiculous things like water going over the edge of the earth and the sun going underneath it and the earth rising and just all sorts of stuff that really nobody I know really believes any of that. Um, but the beginning of it, they were showing a spacewalk. And the guys like, flat earthers think all of NASA's imagery is fake. He's like, I know pictures can be fake, but to think all their photos are fake. And then in my head, I'm like, ding, 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 ding. If all the 9-11 imagery isn't real and all the Apollo imagery isn't real, yeah. why would any of this be real? What am, I th what am I doing here? Why would any of this be real? So I started poking away a little bit. Again, there wasn't much, but I came across two other things and what had to do with the issues with the flight routes in the South and one had to do with the issues with the GPS being turned off in the South. One of the videos, I don't even think was in English. I don't remember which one. I think maybe the one with the flight routes. Um, I think it was like a Russian guy or something. Um, so I saw those and I was looking around a little more. And then in 2014, in December of 2014, I did a show. I was interviewed on a show called Out of the Darkness Into the Light with this girl, Connie, I know, and her friend Wayne. And then all of a sudden, Wayne starts saying, hey, have you heard about that the earth is flat and Ba, 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 ba. And I said, you know, I've heard about that. I look at it a little bit. I told my co-host, like, hey, let's have a look at this. I'm open. You know, I mean, all of this stuff is like, you know, I'm open. Let's look. Um, but then he started he started going off about it. And he had told me that he, he this has been his stance since 2004, which is like, that's a fucking long time. That's 10 yeah. years before. Yeah. And he, he was telling me all this. Um, and that was in December. So basically what had happened is I went that quickly went down deeper into that rabbit hole after having a conversation with them, even though I was already looking. Now I had some more information. He gave me a couple of the arguments and a couple of the things. He would have been so happy. With, you know, he, he would have been so happy at that stage, 10 years on, to finally have some company on that road. Because what yeah, a, so he what figured a, he'd drop it on me. Yeah. What a a long time to be one of the only ones, I mean, there were obviously quite a few out there dotted around the world, but for the most part, nobody was looking at that. So how lonely yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. So um, right around December of 2014 and then going into 2015, that was also like one of the last shows I did because I told you I was sick of the 9-11 BS. So that 
me transitioning into starting to really dive into that and me being sick of the 9-11 BS is at like the same time. I stopped doing shows. I didn't do shows for three years, but in that three years, so right about about three or four months after looking into Flat Earth, my friend sends me a meme. And it was the Berenstein Bears, Berenstein Bears. And he explained to me what the Mandela effect was. And I knew right away, I knew right away that like, I don't, I don't look outside of me to assess reality. Like I don't need somebody like to tell me that oh, I didn't experience that. I know it was the Berenstein Bears. It was not the Berenstein Bears. And I understood the concept of the Mandela effect. And for those that don't, I should probably clarify that real quick. When I say Mandela effect or the people I associate with, we're not talking about false memories. We're not talking about companies and logos and brands changing names. We're not talking about movie misquotes. We're not talking about the telephone game. Although all of those things happen in reality, but none of them are what the Mandela effect is. I'm talking about retroactive reality shifts where something changes in this reality, yet it changes all the way back to its origin point. And of course, we'll give some examples soon. Um, but so the Berenstein Bears changed to the Berenstein. Most people are familiar with that. And that means every Berenstein Bears book, if you have one, will say Berenstein on it. Now, I had those when I was young. But remember, at the same time, I'm just starting to dig into the NASA stuff really deep now, the globe deception and all this. I kind of put it to the side a little bit for like not long, like two or three months. I was still looking a little bit. There wasn't much out there. It was pretty much the Berenstein Bears, the Berenstein Bears. And uh, God, I can't even remember now. It was one of the first other ones talked about. But was it obviously six in, the, Nelson, six in the city? That's an early one. It could have been Haas Avocado. I mean, there's a lot of that first batch. That's definitely an early one. Yeah. Um, but anyways, what happened is a couple months went by. And then I realized that the land masses of the earth were in the wrong freaking position. I had seen the geography changes. I had seen what happened to South America and Cuba um, and, and various other places. And I, I already understood the Mandela effect. Like a lot of people hear that and say, well, you were just telling us that NASA lies about the imagery. And, and now you're going to say this, that they just changed it. No, because it's changed all the way in the past on all the globes and maps, including the ones in your house. Just like the Berenstein Bears has changed to the Berenstein, the land masses of the earth are in the wrong position. And you could say the Mandela effect's not real, but time and time again, I walk up to people and ask them, you know, where's South America related to North America? What animal lied with the lamb in the book of Isaiah? And I just roll over people all the time. Somebody came in at work tonight, um, and I work in a bar for people that don't know. Um, and I have no problem telling people about my podcast. My like, People at my work watch, including the owner. He watches some of them, even though he thinks we went to the moon and all this. That's cool if you want to watch. That's fantastic, right? Um, people are intrigued by the Mandela effect. Now, a lot of people are starting to know. Now, when I start to say, because I wore my shirt to work today. I wore my blue one, though. I got soy sauce all over it. So I put this one on after I showered. Um, but I said they said, hey, dose of reality. That's to make sure, you know, it's all. This is my podcast. Oh, what do you talk about? The Mandela effect, you ever heard of it? So she says, yeah. Now, normally when people have heard of it, they think, oh, yeah, that's where the misremembering thing. Blah, 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 blah. So I said to her, you heard of it? She said, yeah. I said, well, why don't you tell me what you've heard? What do you think the Mandela effect is? She said, well, I had a friend that worked at the Smithsonian. And I said, oh, so you do know <laughs> what the Mandela effect is. And for yeah. those that don't know... What's yeah. And I know you're aware of this, but for those listening, uh, what's the second word for the Smithsonian? It begins with an I. And, you know, without hesitation, I'm sure you all said the same thing. Roll off your tongue. Well, it's the Smithsonian Institute. Well, now it's never been that. It's always been the Smithsonian Institution. This one girl that's a good friend of mine now that I work with, I helped train her like a few months ago when she started. And while I was training her, it came up. You know, hey, so how do you how do you pay your rent? Only working here a few days. Oh, I got a podcast, and you know, so I do both these things. So it has to come up. People always ask, "What do you talk about?" I said, "The Mandela effect." Do you know what it is? She looked at me dead in the face, and she said, "I know that Chick Fil A never had a K." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. That yeah, more and more people are becoming aware of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of my 
um, people I talk to, you know, in real life, not online friends and family, um, they're aware of it. But I think some people don't realise the significance of it. They just shrug it off. They they don't understand it. They do accept that it's happening, but they don't. It, it doesn't affect them or impact them in their lives. So they're the ones that are still in that sort of semi sleep they they are aware of it so I've got a few of those I've got a few that definitely are intrigued and then I do have a couple that just go oh no I don't I don't you know resonate with that so but you get a lot of you know but you get a lot of pushback I think because you're very vocal about it whereas I'm only just starting to talk about it now more publicly but you've been doing this work now for the last few years. So you would have got a lot of pushback from people. And funnily enough, you say that a lot of it is from flat earthers or other truthers that are Mm -hmm. sort of Mandela effect. And before we move on, for people that don't know how it got its name, do you want to just um, tell people why it is called the Mandela effect? Yeah, they call it the Mandela effect. And when I tell this story, I mean, I don't, even know if the story is true and the person involved i completely do not trust in fact i think the person's probably a cia asset basically or something like that um and the name's fiona broom and supposedly in like 2009 or something uh fiona and this is this is the thing too where people kind of just shrug off the mandela effect the problem is the problem is before i tell the story is people think oh and i've heard truthers say this right oh well the Mandela effects talked about, they talk about in the media, they wouldn't talk about it if it was real. And it's like, well, they talk about 9-11, Rona, the moon landing and all this, but they misdirect you. That's mm. what they're doing with this. And yeah. what they do is they never talk about, they, they, so the Mandela effect, you know, with these, with the, when these things change, we have loads of physical evidence that also corroborates our memory and it's everywhere. And these articles that come out about the Mandela effect, they don't even ever talk about that we have that everywhere. They want you to just think it's a memory game and blah, 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 blah. But get its name. Fiona Broom was supposedly at some sort of function or party. And it came on the TV about uh, Nelson Mandela uh, being released from jail. Uh, And a lot of people uh, had remembered Nelson Mandela had died uh, many years before that. And that's how it supposedly originally got its name. Now, that's not one that really resonates with me. I know it does with some people. I just don't know either way. But there's a whole lot about that that's fishy to me. So I don't really ever bring that one up. It just stinks like high hell to me. A lot of things could have came into play with that. People being switched out. People talk about body doubles and all this. And a lot of that could come into play with that whole Mandela situation. I'm not saying that's the case. Yeah, I don't need to go and I already know that things stinks like crap. So that's how it got its name. Although I will say this, there are definitely people that in my reality died and then they came back. Mm-hmm. And for some people, I think Nelson, you know, um, some people do remember that. I don't remember either way. Yeah. I'm I rem- just skeptical of that one. Yeah. I what think do you remember? I, I remember him dying in jail. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I was um, gobsmacked like years later to find out that he was released and then he ended up becoming the president of South Africa yeah. and I'm like I could swear that he died and another one for me was um Kurt Douglas I remember him dying years ago and then all of a sudden he a lot was... of people do. yeah yeah and there's there's other ones too I can't think off the top of my head now but there were a few I I did a live stream with Mike Williams Sage Aquay I did a few you know and on a live stream when he was on my channel for the first time and we were talking about the Mandela effect I don't remember if it was his awakening or whatnot and his biggest Mandela effect was Kirk Douglas, but yeah. this is where it gets this is where it gets crazy. So his biggest Mandela effect was what you just talked about, Kirk Douglas coming back after remember seeing his son crying when he was dead and all this. And then as he's telling the story, Kirk Douglas died again during my live stream. Oh my god! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, yeah, talk it was about crazy. Timing, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, uh, so I'm not, I I know I've triggered some people in the community before because they do remember Nelson Mandela. I'm just skeptical of that whole thing with that, but I'm not saying that that's definitely not a real Mandela or anything, but I don't, I don't go to that. I I don't go to that. But Louis Anderson, for me, I don't know if you know who Louis Anderson is. He was a very famous comic in America. And for me, he died in the late nineties. But I saw him alive in 2017. Now he's dead again, but I saw him alive in 2017. He, I love the terminology. He's dead again. You know, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And it does get confusing because you do know that, you know, some people exit the um the world stage. Like I definitely um, believe that David Bowie is still with us physically. I think that his so-called death um, a few years ago, um, yeah. he just, he exited the public arena basically. And I think that happens to a lot of people. So, but I do think there are definite Mandela effects where people actually did die and then all of a sudden definitely. now in this reality, they're still alive and, and yeah. Definitely. And so a, a few things with that, it's like the one, the other thing that muddies the waters with that, which makes it hard for me and it makes it hard for somebody to research that if it doesn't affect you personally. Now I'm very bad with celebrities. So celebrities dying and coming back isn't something I focus on, but I do. There are ones that affect me like Louie Anderson. Um, but the other thing is that muddies the waters is all the goddamn celebrity death hoaxes, the stories yeah. that go out there. Because then some people read those and they're disinformation and then they, oh, I believe and I remember this guy died four years ago, but that yeah. was a fake death story and now they're going to call it a Mandela effect. So I recognize yeah. that that stuff doesn't happen. I try and yeah. you got to use a lot of discernment. I've actually um, got um, proof, um, personal proof that that does happen because um, I am actually in touch with um, somebody that's in um, Barry Gibb of the BGs. Um, mm -hmm. He's in his, you know, little group that uh, sort of oversees Barry Gibbs um, business arrangements and things like that. I won't divulge who he is, but I know him. I have emailed him many times. We've had back. And he's calls. also involved in a huge Mandela effect. But continue. yes, okay. yeah. But um, because when I wrote my memoirs, I included some stories about the Bee Gees because they originally, when they came out from England, they settled in the same town that I settled in when I came out from England, albeit they were here a lot earlier than I was because they're probably 20 years older than I am but they grew up in my hometown here in in Redcliffe for a little bit of their childhood mm -hmm. and they also knew my mother-in-law and she sang with them so I wrote about it in my book so cutting a long story short I sent Barry Gibb a copy of my book and I was in touch with um, this person that works for him anyway a little while ago I can't remember how long ago it was a few months ago maybe a year ago or a year year and a half ago I heard somewhere on the grapevine online that Barry Gibb had supposedly died and I'm like oh my god so I got in touch with this guy and he got back to me within 24 hours he said no that's a hoax he said Barry is still with us he's alive and well and he's enjoying life in Florida and you know with his family and blah 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 so I'm like oh thanks for letting me know yeah so I know that does happen yeah so someone yeah. out there yeah so just, yeah so my my opinion is the fact that see these are also the hardest to prove right like so I know many people that experience the Kirk Douglas thing Louis Anderson thing right but it's damn near impossible to prove that like doesn't have all the residue like these other Mandela effects do like it's like the hardest ones harder than name changes which are easy to show residue of. it's one of the hardest things to show um so that's a clever name for the Mandela effect because first of all think about the stages people go through it's named after Nelson Mandela, polarizing guy, no matter what people think of him. And that turns people away instantly. Well, they think it's this political thing. Uh, then the second thing you're doing is now you're naming the whole phenomenon after one Mandela effect, which clearly doesn't affect everybody. I see a lot of people it doesn't affect with that one. It'll turn people away, right? If they're not affected by that. And then it's like... Uh, and I forget what my third point was with that. But yeah, I think I think it's been named that intentionally because you know and and those are the hardest type of changes to prove uh where but like i don't know what we can do about it people have suggested all these different names and we try to rename it and we just kind of stuck with it that's what people know it as and you know you got to kind of just always try to really explain to people what it is uh you know but for me like you know the fact that there's so much residual evidence for all of this like you know all these grocery stores that i've been showing and you know in, in their computer systems things are still spelled the way that they used to be before the mandala effect changed it i walk up to pastors and preachers on the street and i ask them these bible verses and have them fill in the blanks and every single time they fill it in the way which has allegedly never existed and but it's the way we all remember I walk up to people that should be experts on this stuff. Jehovah Witnesses selling Bible courses in the middle of the town. 
right? I, I talk to people that I'm every Uber or Lyft driver I have. I ask them to sing the Mr. Rogers song to me. If I say Ed McMahon, what do you think about? They go in this whole description about how we used to bring giant checks to people's doors to publish the clearinghouse. Well, he's never done that now in this reality. I'm not going to ignore all this. Look at the commercial airliners. The engines are hanging off the front of the wings. Mm. They were always under the wings. They've been Mandela affected to look completely structurally unsound, yet it's a retroactive change. And even if you have pictures of yourself at a runway at an international airport from 20 years ago, the airplane behind you in the image is going to have wings that the engines that look completely foreign to you because they're hanging off the front of it. Uh, this changes in, in absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, world geography, human anatomy, all the biggest movies, music, Bibles, uh, artwork, the creation of Adam. Man is now higher than God. I mean, God used to reach down at Adam like this and the, the painting on the Sistine Chapel ceiling uh, depicting, sparking the life, you know, the divine spark into man. And now God is down like this. And it was never like that in this, in my reality. Yeah. You and know? another big one too is the thinker statue, which has changed a couple of times now, hasn't it? Yeah. And the yeah. fact that you've got um uh you've had pictures up on your lives where there's like bus loads of tourists, they're all doing the the original pose. And yeah. um yeah, and yet the thinker statue behind them is now doing what is it now? It's changed that many times now. Wasn't he, it now it's the... his hands like this, but now his hands like open and his right elbow is now crossed over to the left knee. He's like this. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the plane, ridiculous. the planes too. Like because um, I took heaps of photos. I went back to England in 2012, and um, I took heaps of photos from the plane. I've also travelled domestically within Australia because before my father passed away in 2020, um, he had moved to Tasmania ten years prior to his passing. So we'd been to Tasmania a few times and I always like taking, getting the window seat and taking photos and we usually sit just over the wing or maybe slightly in front of the wing and I like getting a lot of photos. And I've gone through a few of my photos. I haven't dug all of them up. But now there's the engine there and you can't see much of anything really other than this whopping big thing hanging out from the front of the wing and I knew damn well that wasn't there when I was taking all these photos of of the view down below you know the scenery down below so that's nope. a huge one nope. yep it's gigantic it's a huge Mandela effect I mean I did a few four or five hour streams just on that uh, in like 2018 um so like for people that don't understand it, we should explain it. Like, so if the Mandela effect, so for instance, anybody listening right now, uh, you know, how does the Mr. Rogers theme go? And if you started to say, oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, it's never been that now. It's always this neighborhood. Now, what we're telling you is, even if you have an old recording of it, that recording, it will now say this neighborhood, the new way. If you had a secondhand recording, recording the recording, you'll hear it the new way. If you have a photograph of something like Amanda was just saying, uh, let's say, for instance, um, sex in the city, right? Sex in the city has now always been sex and the city. So yep. let's just say most people notice that change. Let's say 2016, 2017. Yep. Yep. That's a perfume box that I got given. Yep. A while ago and it says sex in the city yes it's knockoff perfume it's not from the original makers of that franchise but why would they have sex in the city on that and now it's always been sex and the city that was a huge one that was one of the first ones for me yeah and if you have the dvds in your house everybody they're gonna say sex and the city now and not only that if you took a picture of it and you know it said sex in the city your photograph is going to change to match the current reality. Your videos are going to change to match the current reality of anything that's been Mandela affected. And that's why I can show people these images of all of these people posing in front of the thinker statue. And they're posed like this, yet the statue's behind them like this. Because when the Mandela effect changed the statue, it changed it in all the photographs in this reality. Yes, people, this is really going on. And the part that really disturbs me, Amanda, is I'm starting to think that a lot of the truth is kind of more asleep than the noise. Mm. I mean, it's really strange because 
I, at least for me, what my journey was, was not living in fear and, still, and trust yourself, trust your senses, trust what I experience, trust what I observe, don't trust what I'm being told reality is or this place is. However, now when the Mandela effect comes up, people think you shouldn't trust your senses, you shouldn't trust your memory, and they think they've got everything figured out. And the interesting part is this isn't, oh, me and Amanda and 100 people went to some castle and it was haunted and here's our testimony. Now you can believe us or not. Well, you're not on the outside looking in like that. We're all in the castle. Mm. We're all in the big castle and everybody here is Mandela affected. And I prove it all the time. I've been doing it for years, all the time. And the reason I do it was never to make fun of people. It's to show people that everybody's going through this, including the people that you're listening to and following you that are telling you it's a psyop, it's fake, and it's not real, and you shouldn't pay attention to it. Well, listen to all the Mandela effects that continually spill out their mouths. I yeah. could rule over anybody in a conversation if they would have if they would just answer questions to me and show you how Mandela affected they are. And that's yeah. not an insult. In fact, I think it's a compliment. Uh, I think we're being communicated with from something on the outside. This isn't accidental. And, you know... Um, you do, you're really doing the work of the mainstream lot, the mainstream agenda liars, the mainstream science, because they've been trying to hide the supernatural, hide where we came from, hide what we are, hide where we are in the universe, all of this stuff. And now we're seeing it take place. This is goes to all you religious folk too, as well. Let's get off the truth just for a minute. All you religious folks, some are truth, some aren't. You believe in a book or books about supernatural stories, but now it's taking place and you're going to deny it. Well, you what? Wait another 2000 years for something that's predicted in your book to happen. It's happening now. In fact, it's happening to your book that you worship so much in the book of Isaiah. And I asked the person at this yet today at work, too, uh, when when the Mandela effect came up and I said, hey, you familiar with the Bible? She said, yeah. I said, in the book of Isaiah, what animal lies with the lamb? And of course, without hesitation, she said the lion. I said, it's never been the lion now. And the girl working with me behind me was like, shut up. I said, check any Bible, any version. It's always been the wolf now. Could yeah. you imagine that you believe in stories of people walking on water and you're going to just dismiss the Mandela effect, yet you rehearsed it as the lion and lamb for 30 years of your life and now it's the wolf and you're just going to deny it and you don't think there's a meaning behind that message and you want to ridicule people like me, say I'm going to burn in a lake of fire or Brian, he talks about the Mandela effect so much. The Bibles are being supernaturally rewritten. Human anatomy is changing under your skin. The land masses of the earth are in the wrong place. Things that physical matter is altering retroactively throughout the fabric of time. And does time even exist at this point? I mean, because uh, things, it, and we're supposed to ignore this. This isn't a big deal. And what they'll do is always try and come back to, they try and use the fact that we have so many changes against us and they'll be like well who cares if chick-fil-a doesn't have a k well they're all huge changes if retroactively things are changing like that that's huge but i just told you that south america was in the wrong position and you don't want to talk about that yeah i know it's crazy and it is almost biblical um in a way because um uh, i mean i'm not a follower of the bible i've read bits and pieces over the years but um I think it was, you know, written by men and interpreted by men and, and yeah, so anyway, that's a whole other story. But there are parts in the Bible where it talks about in the end of days, so like in, in Revelations, where it's now Revelation, isn't it? Just one, mm -hmm. not plural, yep. I always remember it being Revelations. And I think it mentions in there something about the changes, the earth changes, like land masses. There'll be land appearing where no land was before. And I think a lot of the prophecies too, like, um, you know, Mayan type prophecies or, you know, some of the um, uh, original peoples of the lands, like the Native um, Australians, Native Americans, when they talk about their prophecies of the end of days, they talk about earth changes. And it's actually happening, but it's not happening in the way I thought. I thought maybe cataclysms and things, which still very well may or may not happen. And I don't go down that road because I don't want to jump. I'm not going to fear that. I'm yep, not going to fear exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's happening before our very eyes, just with the Mandela effect, you know, that the fabric of time is, just, you know, a, a fabric of this reality is changing. 
and it's it's yeah. teaching us that it's fluid yeah so yeah, yeah and i don't know how that's not a huge deal to people i mean for me that's like the biggest thing ever i mean reality yeah. is fluid like how do things change but change all the way back through time yeah again yeah if you own a bible uh planets is in the bible now planets wasn't in the bible and then now and then since i made videos on it now it's in even more versions and and more changes keep happening incrementally uh, to all this stuff, it's absolutely insane. My Star Wars movies have changed. My Back to the Future movie has changed. Many changes in it incrementally. Checked my hard copies. I've been down all these roads. Why can I keep going into different grocery stores and retailers? And even though they're selling what's now pass avocados, well, they still have stuff in their computer systems and even get printed receipts at many of these places for Haas which we're told has never existed. The Mandela effect's not real and nothing's going on. Well, yeah. everybody I approach remembers it as Haas and then they, with this weird sound with two A's next to each other, which nobody uses in the English language. Yet you're going to tell us we took the word that was Haas, like the word pass, and we we somehow misconstrued that to Haas and everybody's just saying this all over the world. Everybody I approach, nobody ever tells me it's a freaking Haas avocado. Nobody ever tells me the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. No Nobody ever tells me it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood when I ask them. Nobody ever tells me American Family Publishing when I ask them what company I make. Not a mixture. Not a majority of people tell me, you know, the current reality, but I'm a Mandela Effect guy. And, you know, me and a few friends remember it this way, so we're going to call it a Mandela. No, it's like this. Just like nobody, if I walk up to anybody, walk a hundred adults in a grocery store and I say, hey, what did the queen say in the mirror of Snow White? Every single one of those hundred people is going to look at me and say mirror, mirror on the wall. Yep. And now it's never said that. Now it's never said that. So now it's always been magic mirror. Where's all these magic mirror, mother? You know, where are they all? Because eventually they'll be in this reality because now it's always been magic mirror. Kids will grow up with it and they'll get older. But where are they? Where's all the hats, avocado? Pe- I mean, come on, man. There's so many changes. You got to be delusional to deny that this is taking place. You can say we go too far. You can say we call through many things changes, even though I think we use a lot of sermon and, and don't oh, this way. But you can say that. But to say that there's no changes, that none of this is real and reality isn't fluid, I can't trust the intellect or the integrity of any of these people anymore. So it just yep. makes me want to set more and more from people. Mandela effect's a beautiful thing to me. It makes me happy. It makes me not waste and how much energy, knowing that what I said about early about that day in September, the last four years, NASA, how long am I going to continue wasting my energy on known deceptions? How about trying to be happy, live a great life, live fear-free, yeah. And and try and figure out what this reality is in this in this thing that, in my opinion, you have the earth and the creator created this earth for us. And and it's plentiful of land and resources, which, of course, we're told to scarce and it's hidden and all of this agenda. And somehow a group of people convinced others to give them power. And they've been controlling all these physical deceptions. They control the media. They control the banks. They control the money. They control the education. They don't control the Mandela effect. Mm. The Mandela effect, in my opinion, is the creator trying to wake us up, send us messages, point out things in these deceptions, and give us a training ground for where we're going next. People think I'm the one lost in the sauce? Oh, no. No, sir. I trust myself. I know reality's fluid. It's very obvious. It's literally the most obvious thing ever. I mean, yep. I've experienced, like, thousands of changes. Yeah. And you've had some very personal ones too, haven't you? Like even your hometown changed its name. Do you want to explain that for people that haven't heard that? Yeah, well, it's the neighborhood, not the town that changes. The neighborhood in the the city. Yep. Um, And the last neighborhood I was living in before I moved to the Carolinas, it was always called Centerville. And um, one day I was on my way to work with my boss. He went through a drive-thru to get a coffee in the morning. And he looks up and he, he looked up at the sign. And he goes, Centralville? Centralville? I never knew it was spelled like that. And this is like 2018. And this is like just months after I started doing Mandela videos on my channel. And right away, I got this feeling. I'm like, oh, my God. And I can't say anything to him. (laughs) And we're on our way to work for the whole day. So we go to work for the whole day. And it it was always Centerville. Now it's always been Centralville. 
But nobody's even taken the update. Like it's been years now. Some people will say it the new way, but every most everybody still thinks they live in a neighborhood that has never existed. Yeah, and you rang businesses, yeah. didn't you? And they answered the phone, you know, like um, Centerville Vet or, you know. Businesses yeah. that should know, like every business in that block that's overlooking the sign, City Hall, every cab company, and they all think it's Centerville. In fact, when I said, well, why does my map say Centerville on it? I'm really confused. I don't want you to bring me to the wrong ad. They would get really agitated. It was, yeah. it was pretty wild. Yeah, pretty wild. And then, in fact... Um, so Centerville has never existed. It's always been Centralville. They put a – so when you know how the Mandela effect is. When it changes the official, it changes the official. But there's all this residue on things really close to it. The city of Lowell built a dog park in Centralville, and it's called the fucking Centerville Dog Park. <laughs> they just built it like two – they built it like two years ago. It's like, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. Well, yeah, I've got a couple of personal ones. There's um two – plug outlets in my you know electrical outlets it well actually one is not yeah. one is one is a um where you plug in to for an aerial to go you know aerial on your roof to plug into the back of your tv it's a pocket like aerial socket yeah. and the other yeah. one is a um an actual three-pronged plug um behind the fridge well it used to be behind the fridge but now it's on the side wall next to the side of the fridge crazy that's crazy, yeah. And the other one, big one was um, my husband and I, this is a couple of years ago, more than that now I think, probably three, four years ago maybe, um, we were driving into the next suburb. They've got like a big shopping mall there and the main intersection that gets you to, you know, turn to go into the car park of this shopping mall, there was always a building on the opposite corner and we – we pulled up at the lights to turn and we both looked over and we're like, oh, my God, they've demolished that building. And yet the grass on that block of land was about three foot high, like it hadn't been slashed or mowed for, you know, weeks or even a couple of months. So it wasn't like they'd come in overnight and demolished the building and then quickly laid turf down. It was literally the building was gone and the whole block just had long grass about two and a half, three foot high across the whole block. And we could see the library. Those are some of the craziest ones. Yeah, we could see the library behind because you never could see the, the bottom of the library. You, I think the library there is about three or four stories high and you could always see the top of the library when you were coming in and out of the shopping mall car park, but you could never see the bottom half because of that building. And now you can see the whole library from pretty much the ground floor up to the top level and that block is still vacant. So, yeah, that, that was a huge one to me, um, yeah. And I know other people have had personal ones, but like you said earlier, it's it's hard unless you've got someone in your family or a few friends that can verify. And even then, you're not going to be able to convince it. Well, not that you're trying to convince, but other people in you know the world aren't going to necessarily resonate with it. Because yeah, they're still going to they're yeah. going to still try to find a way to dismiss it because, in their opinion, that can't happen. Yeah. Reality can't do that, but we it's definitely doing that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Look yeah. at Cuba, look how big Cuba is now. You know, Cuba, for anybody listening, I want you to think of the size and location of Cuba compared to Florida. Picture it in your head. And then when you're done listening to the stream, I want you to pull up a map and look at Cuba. And while you're at it, look at where South America is, which we, we started to touch on earlier because South America is now not underneath North America. It's about 1,500 miles over to the east. And, Pan and Cuba is a huge island now, huge, uh, as yeah. big as Florida. And it's also west of Florida and blocking a huge portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And that will be reflected on any old map of globe you might have in your house. Yeah. That's a big deal to me. Yeah. Australia's moved too, as far as I can see. Oh, um, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot more north than I ever remember it. I mean, we used to be called the land down under. And now it's mm -hmm. it's up not far from the equator. Um, the New Zealand one, though, I don't resonate with that. I've heard some people say that they think New Zealand has gone south, but I always remember it southeast, whereas other mm -hmm. people said they remember it being to the north of Australia, like um, mm -hmm. on the east coast, but off to the north. But I always remember it where it is in relation to Australia. But the whole landmass of New Zealand and Australia and Tasmania, which Tasmania is part of Australia, it's the bottom island of Australia, 
it seems to have moved up on the map, whereas before it felt like it was almost down to the bottom of um, yeah. Argentina and south at the bottom of South America, whereas now it's it's halfway up where South America, is, you know, in relation to where South America is. So yeah. that's that's huge. And also I noted, um, and I haven't verified it with anything else at this stage, but <laughs> excuse me. But I saw a globe the other day at a client's house and I looked at the Australia um, landmass on this globe and I've noticed in South Australia there seems to be a big inlet and like a big lake and I don't ever remember that because I've travelled from the east coast to the west coast. I've gone from Brisbane to Perth um, on you know by land, like driven across and and we studied the maps to know exactly how to get there and which route we were going to do and everything. And I know for a fact years ago there was never that big inlet and there was never a big lake coming in that far into Australia. But I haven't looked at other maps yet, so I'll be interested to see. Yeah, there's. I, I suspect there's as many geography changes, honestly, as there are Bible changes. And, you know, um, obviously you have to be somebody that – new geography pretty well to claim that they're Mandela effects. Like, I mean, some people will just, but like I, I stick to to big ones, but I recognize that there's ones I don't talk about that certainly are out there. A lot of people talk about all the islands in Asia being kind of in the wrong position and orientation. And they kind of do look like that to me. I know Mac used to talk about the location of Sri Lanka uh, moving over from one side of India to the other. Uh, yeah. Friends of mine talk about Vancouver Island uh, has changed over up in Canada um, you know, there's, there's all this going on. It's just, yeah. I, I really, I'm, I'm a, I'm a million percent sure about South America, the Panama Canal and Cuba. That's yeah. all different to me. To, to me, that is definitely different, but the area over by Germany, Spain, Finland, it all looks wrong to me, Yeah. but yeah. I just, I, sometimes I just can't nail it down and I don't want to put out something that's not right information, but I think it's all changed. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, Canada's another one too because had we not come to Australia, we possibly would have settled in Canada. Um, the only reason we came to Australia was my grandparents came out the year before, so we followed them. But um, I think my parents or one of my parents was wanting to go to Canada when we were thinking of leaving England. Um, so that's just an aside. But I do know I've, I've studied and looked at the map of Canada because I've always wondered growing up what it would have been like to have grown up in Canada versus Australia, although I'm really happy. It's like all up. water. It's all water now. Yes. There's so much lakes and inland lakes and water. It just looks ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I've noticed that. I've talked about that one many years ago. That one is, is big to me. I talked about it being decimated by water now way more than it had before. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And before, too, you were talking about the memory and how it, it can't be our memories because everybody remembers the old, well, most people, 99% of people remember it the old way. And I was listening to a podcast, I think it was yesterday while I was at work, and I can't remember because I listened to so many, so I can't remember who it was, but they were talking and I had to have a chuckle because they brought up, and I don't know what, um, I, I can't quote the Bible verse because I'm not that well versed mm. on the Bible, but, you know, what, what number it is. But that one where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst. And that, that that's what they said. And I'm chuckling away to myself saying, you might want to check that verse now because it doesn't say where two or more are gathered. Yeah. You know, so And that, that is uh, such a huge one. And that is the one I've really focused on more than uh, anybody, I think, or at least to me on a personal level, that's what I focus on more than any other Bible change. Definitely Lion and Lamb a lot, so much evidence and so huge to people, but the two or more are gathered because first of all, you know, that changed shortly before what happened in 2020. And that, so, you know, if you walk up to anybody and ask them Matthew 18, 20, and most people, they won't know chapter and verse. Uh, and then you start it for them and say, I want you to fill in the blank where two or blank gather. There I am. There I am in the midst, different versions, but they all yeah. used to say with two or more. Every person is going to tell you two or more. Now it's always been two or three. If it's always been two or three, don't you think 90% or higher should tell me three, not more? Mm. 
And how you, you, oh, they just mixed up the number three and the word more. I've heard people say that. Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a logical thought. Are you kidding me? Dude? I know. Um, yeah. The so I did videos. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a little more of my background, we kind of glossed over it. But when the thing rolled out in 2020, knowing what I knew about the day in September, you know, I took it upon myself to really get out there and show people that that was complete nonsense. I took 15 flights in a row without covering my face, filmed it all to show people. I would go to Huntington Beach and other beaches in California to talk to people in the street about this. Although I would also see people preaching the Bible and I would start talking about the Mandela effect to them on the streets, particularly Huntington Beach, California. And again, another example of this, I walked up to these three guys professing the Bible out there. And I asked them both the verses, every single one, one at a time. They were a little bit standing far apart. They couldn't even hear each other answer. Uh, lion, lion, lion. I showed them mm -hmm. it was wolf, wolf. I asked them Matthew 18, 20 with two. And they, oh, they all said with two or more gathered. Well, no, it's always been two or three now. And and yeah. back to what I was saying. Now, anybody, if you, if you remember with two or more gathered and you think the Mandela effect is a psyop, or you think we're just falling, you, you know, we're just falling for the psyop. They changed the Bibles, but you do remember two or more. What I'm literally telling you is you cannot show me a Bible that you own in your own house or anywhere that says two or more are gathered in my name. They all say two or three now. They've all been supernaturally rewritten retroactively all the way back to their origin point. And now let's look at the message. With two or more are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst. There I am. It's about the presence of God being there for the gathering. Now it's where two or three are gathered. What happens if there's four? What happens if there's 50, right? And then it's it's a limited gathering. And then who were the first people to limit the gatherings? Notably, it was the churches. There was all over the, you know, the fake news, and but they really were pushing that. The one near my house and before I moved here, they were even giving the thing out in there, in the church, right? Later on down the line. So they were all aboard the agenda, and then I, I, I literally on a live stream said, you're going to use this Mandela affected scripture against Christians. And sure enough, just in August of 2020, a guy named Governor Holcomb of Indiana comes out on TV. He says, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, not two or three hundred. Stay in the house. Jesus would wear a mask. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. I'm not going to keep going on because we can't talk about oh, that type of truth. Yeah? Yeah. But this is important stuff. I mean, how people cannot think that that, that is important stuff. And what's crazy is I always think, like, what's going to be the big Mandela effect that these people, you know, they can't deny. If they're going to deny, they're going to deny. It doesn't even matter with some of these people. And now it's gotten to the point where... It's totally on the table for me to question if they're all the same humans as us. Mm. Are they actually humans? I'm not yes. saying every person who denies it is an NPC, but I think there's a lot of them. I think it's totally on the table. I know that type of talk triggers people. But yeah. look at all the, the, the uh, as beautiful as this place is, look at all the adversity we have to go through to experience life and experience joy and pain and learn our lessons here, right? Is it out of the question that God would have put some NPCs in here to play a role and become obstacles when needed or fillers when needed in our experience of this reality? I think it's likely. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about that? Do you think uh, yeah. there might be people here that aren't humans with us? Yes, I absolutely do. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I'm leaving everything on the table. And I think it's also um, refreshing to be able to say that we don't know because that's another thing, getting back to the truthers and how they're probably some of the hardest people to deal with when it comes to denying the Mandela effect. It's because they've so invested in their going down the rabbit holes and their research and they're building their case for why things are the way they are and not how we've been brought up to believe but they get hooked into that one paradigm that they yeah. they end up losing the ability even though they probably started with an open mind but for some reason whether it's ego or whether it's just somehow the matrix is just pulling them back in again energetically but they seem to be stuck in that groove and can't jump out of that groove again whereas I like to be fully open to anything Anything is possible. I have everything on the table. I sort through the wheat from the chaff, find out what resonates, what doesn't, 
but I can change my mind on things too. Whereas a lot of these other truthers, they're stuck in one lane and that's it. And they will not step out of that lane. Yeah. And yeah. Yep. yeah. And that's been a frustrating thing for me. And I've tried to get away from, uh, like I used to make a ton of videos showing how affected people were. And like I said, it was usually to show the audience and hopefully wake more people up that way. Um, I never really thought I was going to turn too many of them to get them to speak about it. I was hoping that, you know, yeah. basically fell into fears with all of them, except the community of people. But the, as far as the content creators and stuff, and a lot of people think they've reached some like finish line of truth, which is what, yo, you know, everything's fake. Okay. And you know, they lied about this. And that. We're talking about the next step here. We're talking about something that's gigantic. And honestly, if reality is fluid, like that's the biggest thing ever. Like all of this stuff is changing. Like, yeah. um, but, you know, I've learned now, you know, over the last year or two, I'm starting to fade away from most of the truth is no, I love having the gatherings and, and doing the events and going to the meetups and stuff. But there's very few people chats them and I don't watch anybody other than just a couple of people like you can count them on one hand. And the people I associate with, I'll have them on my show for the most part. And um, I feel like it's it's been good and bad for me because I've met some great people. I've actually, the only reason I live here is because of some of the people I met, like Karen and others, and yeah. I came to the Carolinas, and now I live here, and my whole life has changed. But at the same time, uh, very often I feel like the truthers are, they just slow me down, because I'm usually been ahead of most of them, and ahead of the curve, and, you know, I've, I've felt the gate kept, uh, especially when it comes to the Mandela effect. By many people, but I've been very vocal about it. I mean, how many videos I've made saying, you know, truth is gatekeeping the Mandela effect, flat earth is gatekeeping the Mandela effect. Like it's a, yeah. it's a joke. It, it's sad and it's pathetic. Um, but I don't, I tend to not get as aggravated now. Now I also am enjoying that I've, uh, um, you know, I, I, I live a very positive life. A lot of truth is very negative. Mm. And if you just keep staying, I'm not saying it's not, it has its role. Like you need to go through the deceptions and the fear and especially so you can pass that message on, make no mistake about it. Yeah. I don't look at those things anymore, but you can be damn well when I see people in the street and they want to know what I talk about. I don't just tell them the Mandela effect. I tell them that I don't believe anything the media says, politics, it has no value and they want to keep you in fear. Even if I don't use words like that day in September or the last four years. But that does come up a lot. To, I told two customers today that the last four years was complete BS. Customers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they brought it up because they they said something about, oh, how something, something was a joke during that. And I said the whole thing was a joke. I don't buy any of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so so um, I forget where I was going with that. You might have yeah. to reel me back in. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know where you were going with it either. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, residue, do you want to talk a little bit about residue? For, we've mentioned the, the word a few times, but people that may be just coming across this information yeah. for the first time. I definitely would love to talk about it. And um, maybe we could take a five-minute break first. But also, yeah. um, we'll talk about residue We'll talk about some of the other aspects of the Mandela effect. I want to talk about the consciousness update that I see people take, which again, you know, that kind of, for those of you that don't think it's, I don't think we live in a simulation. I know a lot of people believe that on the table though, okay, yeah. it's on the table. I just don't personally believe it. I think that's the agenda. We could touch more on that, but whether you believe we're in a simulation or God's creation or whatever you think this place is, it appears that people have taken some sort of update right in front of us, whether yeah. that's, supernatural consciousness thing whether that's a computer virus type of thing um so i think we should we should talk about all that too but could we take a, just yeah. a quick break yeah that's cool we can do that yeah no worries <laughs> okay so we're back from our 5 minute break so um, all right. yeah so um, where did you want to kick off again, Brian? You remembered well, something. Well, I, 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 yeah, I had a thought that I lost, but I gained it back. So, like, I have had like a, a lot of positives and a lot of negatives from my my experiences as far as dealing with people, truth communities, groups, nine eleven groups, flat Earth groups, Mandela effect group, you know, this type of stuff. Um, I mean, my life's changed. I've met wonderful people. Like, and those are my people now. 
Like, uh, but at the same time, you got to be careful because when you get into groups, group think starts to apply. Yep. People are afraid to go down certain ways because they're worried what other people are going to think. Oh, you're trying to discredit this and ba 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 ba. Obviously, there's ego, there's shill calling, there's there's just all sorts of stuff that goes on. But for me, like I was really, I felt really inspired to be part of like, and, and I feel a big part of, of truth movement, um, especially during the last four years and and showing people that and showing people the Mandela effect. But right now, I'm kind of in a different spot in my head. So I don't want to live in fear. But not only that, I want to be happy. My happiness is really needs to come like really near the top of the list of my priorities. I'm already 46 years old. I mean, probably half my life is as far as the, the first run, uh, at least not even the first run, who knows? As far as this current run in the physical realm is concerned, <laughs> I'm probably about halfway through. Yeah, hopefully I'll make it that far or longer. Um, I'm not going to waste years away being miserable and especially when I the almost I'm not saying nothing bad goes on in the world. Obviously, it does. We're being psyoped into everything. But the more and more you separate from it and ignore it, yet at the same time apply it. Like when you approach people and talk to people and always apply it in your life, like I'll never live in fear. I'll never watch the media. I'll never do politics. I'm never going to stick one of their things in my arm. I'm never going to do, you know, all of that. Um but I'm going to focus more on me and being happy. Um, I think the Mandela effect is a big part of that, but also like now I am uh, doing this bartending thing and uh, I really enjoying like putting myself in like, cause now I'm this like, uh, and I have so far to go, but now I'm much more awake than I was 14 years ago, right before I stopped being a normie. And now I'm kind of like immersed with all these people. And it's like, cool. It's real cool because like I'm bringing up all this stuff to them and I'm seeing now I'm thinking like, it's we are waking people up online, but after doing it for so many years on some of these topics, it is a pretty big echo chamber. I think this is more effective what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And I'm real. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm meeting all sorts of people. And the fact that I have a podcast and talk about this stuff. It comes up all the time. It came up to three different customers tonight and we talked about it. Yeah. Cause that's what happens, isn't it? We do get caught in that echo chamber. And that's why I like um, a lot of the street activists, um, like Joshua Swift that gets out there with the Yeah, he's um, awesome. Yeah, with yep. his uh, flat earth stuff. And um there's a guy, um he's he goes by John Smith, but that's not his real name, but he's in um the UK. And people like that. So yep. I really enjoy that because you're getting, you know, yeah, you, you cop a lot too. So you've got to have real thick skin, but you're planting seeds. And um, and they reckon that if people hear something, it usually takes three times, the, the power of yeah. three. And if someone hears something three times, they're more likely to go, hmm, well, maybe there is something in this. Yeah. And, you know, and I feel that, as people that want to call ourselves, see, I don't want to be called the truth or I don't want to be called the flat earth or I don't want to be called a 9-11 no planer. I'm a, I'm just a guy that doesn't live in fear. I don't believe they're bullshit. And I'm sure there's still bullshit of theirs, I believe. I'm trying to come out of it. We've been programmed our whole life. Mm. Um, but for the most part, I know I don't buy their bullshit. I pay no attention to any of it. Um, I don't want to label. And a lot of these groups have a lot of ego I mean, God, the the volatile 9-11 community and the ego-headed flat earth community. I mean, it's yeah. it's absolutely crazy how these people think that they don't need to go any further and they have it all figured out. Um, no. And this Mandela effect isn't going to be the end of the line. To me, it's the biggest thing right now. But where are we going next? Are we coming back? Well, these are all bigger questions, but obviously we don't have any, we're not experiencing that yet. We're experiencing the Mandela effect. We're experiencing that lied to us about where we are. We can experience, you know, these other things, but we don't know where we're going next. Yeah. But I think the Mandela effect is preparing us for that. And I think that if you're not totally prepared for that next level, 
that's when you get reincarnated and recycled back through here and you keep coming back through till you meet that cumulative spiritual total percentage or whatever it is and you're ready to get on out of here and i think the mandela effect is a key aspect of that yeah exactly and the, the thing about no fear too going back to what you talk about about not having any fear because that's what they feed on doesn't matter what you think this realm is whether you know um you believe it is a a simulation or a realm or it's just an infinite plane or whatever but we definitely know that there are people in high places that we don't even know their names and we'll never know their names because the people that we think are in control are still just puppets of the the real puppet masters but on the the very highest levels of where these controllers are I believe that they do feed on fear. Um, now, whether they literally feed on it, like people call it louche. But for I think some, it's literal. Yes, but for, but a lot of people can't get their head around that. So, But even just keeping everybody in fear, the best way to control people is to keep them in fear. So it's a multi-layered thing. There's many reasons for the fear. Um, so that is probably the biggest thing that we um, need to learn is to not have fear. And I have um, I know we're getting a little bit off Mandela effect, and I do want to swing back to that in a minute. But recently I've been investigating a lot of NDE and OBE experiences and um, people that are being interviewed that have had, you know, these near-death experiences. And probably one of the biggest messages that they bring back is to not have fear, let go of all fear. There is nothing to fear. There is no death. Life yeah. goes on and we just change form, but we're still us individually and we still carry on in other realms after we leave our physical body here. So there is actually nothing to fear, but I think it goes beyond that. I think once we stop fearing, we're cutting off the um, the you, food supply. That's when you can start manifesting positive things too yes. in this reality. So exactly. It's a big yes. swing. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. I, I, w I do want to get back to um, your explanation for my viewers about residue, but just what you said then, um, and I've just lost it now. <laughs> what did you? Well, just I was say? talking. We were going. We were going from getting away from the fear and then manifesting positive things in Ma the reality. Yeah, manifesting. I was wondering too whether part of the Mandela effect could also be us manifesting. Yeah. Um, you know, like on a mass conscious level, if so many people think of something a certain way, then does it does it actually change in our reality? And then it's all of a sudden a different way because people have been focusing. And And I've often thought it'd be good if we could do an experiment like that, but it would be hard to tell, you know, depending on, you know, certain things. It, it's one of those things where would we know it's changed? Would we be one of these people that, thinks it's always been the way well that, i mean yeah. as far as when other things have changed we've retained our old memories and have noticed i think we would notice yeah. now as far as and obviously i've thought about this and i leaned a little more towards this in the beginning I'm, I'm this is still like uh this is probably like for me i think this is like a subcategory of the cause if you if you would say like i think this can be going on as well as though i don't think it's the primary cause um because some of it it's like Seems like direct messages from the creator to me, uh, synchronicity and whatnot. But 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 some of it, it's like, well, let's just say first, because first of all, I don't think there's huge masses of people aware enough of this yet that are doing these experiments you're talking about yet. So I don't think that's taken place yet. However, it could be taking place, but inadvertently, and people don't realize that they're all doing it, right? Mm. And if that's the case, like, we're inadvertently causing some of these changes, I could see how that would happen for some, but, like, why would we focus on Haas being Haas and changing it in that manner? Why would we focus on American Family Publishing for Ed McMahon when most of us never even heard of that company? It, it, so I think it can work in some situations, but I don't think it can be the primary thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think it can be going on. In fact, it's one of the theories I like a lot. Um, I just don't think it's the only and the primary cause of the changes, but I think it can be contributing to some of it. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to talk about residue and, and explain to people that don't know what <clears throat> residue is? Yeah, so residue. So, for instance, <clears throat> when something changes in the Mandela effect, let's use, let me see what a lot of people use as a, Really good example. Okay, we'll go back to mirror mirror again. 
mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all. Now it's always a magic mirror on the classic Disney movie. Okay. Now when we say residue, what I mean by residue is, well, you can find t-shirts with it quoted. You can find other material from Disney, like a book I have over here that has it quoted as Mirror Mirror in the book because it was Mirror Mirror. You can find it in a variety of songs from 60s songs to 90s songs to current songs, rap songs, rock songs. People are quoting Mirror Mirror on the wall. Yep. Um, you can also find it in the Snow White that's dubbed over in many other languages where somebody narrated over the original audio track, took out what we're calling as the changed Mandela track that now says Magic Mirror. And it's a different audio track, so it's not the Mandela affected one. They obviously are reading the script, so they didn't just mess up and say Mirror Mirror, and it was Magic Mirror. They read a script that said Mirror Mirror, and it's still intact in some of these dubbed over versions. This is what we call residue. Yeah. There's people that have tattoos of the Ford logo, the way that it used to be before it changed and now has this curly thing on the app. Well, the Volkswagen logo, which is now split. People have tattoos of it the old way. People do artwork of things that have now changed. They remain. Mostly all of that remains. Mm -hmm. Okay. What changes is the official thing, all the instances of it. And any photographs or videos of said thing change to correlate with this reality. And you can come up with your own theories on why that is. How interwoven is this digital reality? Is, is, it, is it the devil doing it? Is it God? Are we in a computer? Like, these are the questions we have. But this is definitely taking place. Like, it's so amazing to me that in 2024, with the videos I've done in the last six years since 2018 on this topic, that there's still people out here in YouTube land and these other platforms that would still say that this isn't even taking place. I mean, you look ridiculous, man. Yeah. Yep. So the, that's the, that's residue, and it go, it goes on and on. I should explain even more. Like so, other residue, well, coming out of people's mouths. When I when I showed every single truth that you could imagine, quoting Matthew eighteen twenty is where two or more are gathered in my name, and I show all these pastors and preachers and songs and all of this. That's all residue. That's what we're talking about. That's residue of what was in this reality. And the crazy thing is, the things that have never existed, oftentimes there's more residue and, and evidence of the things that never existed than actually what exists. If you were to go to like TikTok right now, right, or at any site, TikTok, Twitter, somewhere where you can still see the search results, like you can't do it on YouTube. They took it away years ago. And you say there's a couple of, let's just say you looked up Chick-fil-A, Right. And you spelled it the way it currently is, right? You'll get damn near just as many, if not way more results. And I think it's still the case that it's way more results for Chick fil A, C H I C, which has never existed. Right. You can do this on several of the spelling Mandela effects. Yeah. Ask anybody, ask anybody what the DEA stands for in America. Ask anybody what the DEA stands for. Everybody's going to tell you the Drug Enforcement Agency. And then I'm going to hesitate. It's never yeah. been that now. Drug enforcement agencies never existed. The Smithsonian Institute's never existed. Joel Olstein has never existed. Mr. Rogers never sang It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Hoss Avocados never existed. Your kidneys would never weigh down in your lower back. They're now up protected behind bone in, in your rib cage. The land masses of the earth are in the wrong position. Rodney King never said, can't we all just get along? It just goes on and on. Ricky Ricardo never said, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. I mean, we could do this all day. I mean, all day because reality's completely changed. Yep. You got it. I'm not the delusional one. Mickey We're the Mouse, honest one. Mickey Mouse lost his suspenders. Oh, you know, I'm so glad you said that because the most iconic characters have lost their features, their their major accessories. The Monopoly Man never had a monocle. Mickey Mouse lost his suspenders. The comedian Gallagher lost his suspenders. Smokey the Bear lost his suspenders. Other people lost eyewear as well. Tom Cruise lost his sunglasses. The Raisin Bran son lost its sunglasses. And I say lost, I mean never in reality have they had these iconic features. Richard Simmons now never had a headband in any of his videos or any pictures of him anywhere. Yeah. It goes on and on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah.
And, and I think it's fun. I think it's fantastic. I'm having a great time, man. Yeah, because I hear some of the arguments online or, you know, through your show predominantly where people have said about the Monopoly men not having a monocle and people are uh, misremembering them mixing it up with, is it the peanut guy or something? <laughs> and we don't even have that, the peanut. That... Well, we don't even yeah. have the peanut guy in Australia, but I always remember the Monopoly guy having a monocle. So how Listen, could I mix it up with, with a peanut guy that we've never had? An, I know that there's enough there's enough of us in this community that if we even see anybody dressed up as Mr. Peanut, he's getting punched right in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody's mixing up the Monopoly man with Mr. Peanut. And again, like you said, you know, Monopoly's worldwide. And I know many people have no idea who Mr. Peanut was. So they were told that's what they were misremembering him for. How about, how about this one? I mean... Everybody remembers Fruit of the Loom having a cornucopia behind the fruit. Let's be honest with yourself. Now it's yep. never had it. Yep. It's never had it now in this reality. And what the deniers will say on this one, oh, there's a few doozies here. One of them, they'll say, oh, well, you were just mixing that up with images of Thanksgiving. Like, I, like me looking at the tag on my underwear has fucking anything to do with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Second of all, I don't ever really remember seeing cornucopias on Thanksgiving anyways. I know. And sometimes that's the thing, but I've never really experienced that. That wasn't really a thing. Yeah. Um, on, on top of that, it's like so many of us literally only know what a cornucopia was because it was on the tag on our underwears and T-shirts. Yeah. Like when I throw away these anchor memories, you can go fuck yourself. I've even seen these old articles that they've shown. Um, you know, cause so they'll show the old logo history now. And of course there's no cornucopia in any of them. And some of the early ones, there's like brown leaves. So one of the deniers things they say now is that we saw the brown leaves and we assumed it was a cornucopia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Well, I know, I know this one for a fact because I wanted to know what a cornucopia was because I've always been, um, a music fan. Um, I tend to not be a fan anymore because I don't put people on pedestals and now I know what goes on in the music industry, but that's a whole other subject. But for many years I followed particularly heavy metal and you know heavy rock bands and I always loved Black Sabbath and they have a song in the early days when Ozzy was still with Black Sabbath called Corn, uh, Cornucopia and I wondered what it meant. So I was looking around and I don't know how long it took me because obviously computers have only been around a certain amount of time. So whether I found it in a book, I really can't remember now. But when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, that's what a cornucopia is. And then I remembered, oh, I'm sure that's to do with a logo of uh, flu uh, what's it called? Flew the loom, flew to the loom. loom, fruit of the loom um, underwear. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so for me, that cornucopia was definitely there in my reality. And there is a Fruit of the Loom, which is an album a guy made uh, based off Fruit of the Loom, a play on the words. Yeah. And he had a logo like similar to this. And his his son was uh, asked about it. Uh, he said that he would have never used that if Fruit of the Loom didn't have a cornucopia. And on top of that, the guy's yeah. name was, it was uh, Frank Weiss, right? And now his name is Frank Wes. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. 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 So shifty. Yes. Shifty. Shifty. Another thing people need to realize with the Mandela effect too, they they want it to be this like black or white thing. First of all, of course, they want it to not be real. But all what what's interesting is they'll find one Mandela effect that they'll disagree with, or somebody will even tell them that they disagree with, and then they want to shut the whole thing down. It's like, well, what about the 20 that you just remembered the old way, which has now never existed? It, it, it's We don't see all the exact same changes in this reality or even at the same time, but you will find that we see the majority of the exact same ones. You know, like if me and yeah. you went through 50 changes, uh, I'm sure on over 40, if we were familiar with them both sides, I, we would agree, you know, yeah. there would always be a couple, there'd always be yeah. a couple. Like I think the only know. one I've ever heard you say that I remember differently is Luke, I am your father. And you, you always remember it as how it is now, which is no, I am your father. That's the only yeah. one I can think of off the top of my head that I, you know, um, the feel is different to how you remember it. But um, yeah, yeah. And you were going to talk about the updates, like, um, you know, people take the the download rather, you know, like. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there's a couple ways I want to talk about this. So like I, the first level of it is just the indoctrination and people being triggered. So like, and, and it's, it's sad to see, I get depressed seeing it. I don't want to see people throw their senses away. And what'll happen is, Oh, if I say to somebody, you know, uh, what color was C-3PO in the original Star Wars trilogy? And they tell me, well, he was all gold, obviously. And I say, well, now he's always had a silver leg. Oh, yeah, you know, I must have misremembered it. Or oh, now that you mention it, and but, 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 but it's because they don't think that, you know, and they're trying to shut it down. But then there's another level of it where it's like something is happening where people are taking in information because all of a sudden they'll just like, come out with spitting the new reality you and like backstories. And I saw this one guy who was a piano player at a piano bar. And we went there. We were going to do karaoke and sing truth the songs at the karaoke bar, unknowing to the DJ, right? And just stop belting them out. But they weren't open yet. So we went across the hall and we're in the piano bar and a few minutes goes by and I'm like, getting a little bored. And I'm like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to request some Mandela affected songs and see if this guy plays them. So the first one I requested was Mr. Rogers, right? And this is when it got really weird. So I requested Mr. Rogers, the theme song, which right in the beginning has the Mandela effect, as we know, we, we already talked about it. It's the first line of the song. Um, so when I requested it, it's two guys, like a dueling piano bar type thing. Literally the perfect scenario to play the Mr. Rogers song. It'd be a great piano bar song. People would love it. And yeah. it was chill. It was only like 10 people in there. It wasn't packed. It was like seven at night. It wasn't like nighttime yet, like when people were going to come out. So it's, it's just chill. And he's like, oh, this is what I haven't heard in a long time. All right, well, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get to that. I don't know if I can play that, he says. And then I, and I look at him and he's like, you can see that he's looking at the lyrics on the screen and he's getting really confused. So he's like, he goes and he gives the paper to his partner. He like walks it over to him and I can see his partner do the same thing. Right. And then I watch and they played like three or four other people's songs and they kept talking about Mr. Rogers, how they were going to play it, but they would never play it. Right. So then <clears throat> I go and request another song and I request Jewel who will save your soul. And now for people that don't know, throughout most of the song, she says, who will save your souls, plural. It was never plural. All right. So I request it. And now when it comes time to play it, he, he starts to play it. Right. And he's got the lyrics in front of him and he's jamming away on the piano. And every time, and he still hasn't played Mr. Rogers for me. He's like really strange about it, both of them. Really strange. And every time he's not looking at the screen, he's like, who will save your soul? The exact way it always was. Yep. But I could literally, I'm sitting right in the front looking at him. And every time he's looking down at his screen, he would read the lyrics and he would pronounce the S and say souls. And he's going back and forth, right? And then all of a sudden in the middle of the song, he turns to me and looks at me and he you're not going to get any salvation in this church. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on here? Oh my God. So for me, what I think that is, I think as we get deeper into the theory of what I think this is, I think while this is going on, I think there's, there's always, we're being observed by good and bad, whatever you want to call that. And the bad uh, to these people that are vulnerable to it will jump in like a possession mm -hmm. at opportune times to take them over and stop them from seeing what might snap them out of their comatose. And I think that's what happened to that piano guy. And I don't think that was him that said that to me. Yeah. That was something else that follows me around. Yeah. And others. Yeah, exactly. Because I've heard you say the same thing about some of the preachers. It's almost like they get um, they almost start spitting venomously at you when, oh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy how people react like that, you know. So, yeah, it definitely smacks of them being taken over or something controlling them to a degree, whether they fully take over or, or jump into them. Yeah, yeah.
Definitely. I think the Mandela effect is like the ultimate break of the physical matrix and deception that shows you completely how small in scope that is to what this place actually is. And yeah. I really do believe that. And I believe that, you know, I, I believe they want to hide the supernatural and because they run the physical. And here's the thing, too, with the psyops of the Mandela effect. Just like they want you to think it's false memory, here's the gatekeeping, just like with 9-11 and everything else. There's different levels. So let's just say, well, I, I don't believe it's false memory. I know the Monopoly man had a monocle. Something's going on here, right? Okay. Well, here's his CERN. Here's the D-Wave computer. Here's we're in a simulation. And it's all these things where it's they're in control. It's just their machine and some devious plan. And I think it's all BS. It's all a smoke screen. I have no reason to believe any of that. These lying high priests of science that lie to us about everything, they also point us in those directions. Oh, we definitely live in a simulation and all this. I don't think it's that at all. I think, again, they're trying to gatekeep the supernatural. And another thing you'll notice, not only will they give you those theories and all these articles, omitted from all Mandela Effect articles that I've seen, literally almost every single one, I've seen thousands. Yeah. residue residue an explanation of it and the fact whether good or evil because most of my christian friends believe it's evil and the devil's change in the bible and i get why they believe that but most of the people i know believe it's supernatural and it's some deity or force or something that created this place something with more domain over it than us right and that's never mentioned yep yeah. they'll tell you it's CERN all day yeah, you know, yeah. and and what you just said then too about some people thinking it's it's the adversary or the devil or you know the darker um, forces. I was leaning towards that with some of them for a little bit myself, but then I stepped back again and reassessed and realized and saw the the deeper meaning and the messages because when I first saw the you know the the uh, wolf in the Bible with the lamb and I'm like oh my god that but that is actually a yeah. message to let us know that yeah. we yeah that we have wolves around and we yeah we need to be um aware um to what's going on around and to not you know to to call out the um the wolves in sheep's clothing and things like that exactly yeah. and i'd like to talk about the word of god argument because this is a brick wall that nearly every uh religious person comes up against so and I'm just going to lay it out. Some people are going to love it. Most will love it. Some people are probably going to hate what I have to say. <clears throat> the word of God. The word of God can't change. It's like one of the first things I'll go. people go to, right? Miss memory, word of God can't change is what the religious people will say. Okay. So I don't know how people can understand this, but different people, the word of God can't change. So if you're basing that off the Bible, that's based off your interpretation of the Bible, because there's plenty of ways people interpret the Bible where they say that the word of God can change and that there's punishment for it, like in Amos 8. But however, I don't get into the Bible, like I said, never did. Glad I didn't. Here's the fact of the situation. Whether the, even if God, which of course I don't believe some God sat down with a fountain pen wrote the Bible and handed it to you, even if God himself, God himself sat down, fountain pen, handed it to you and said, my word can't change. It's still changing. Like deal with the reality of the freaking situation. But it's not even that severe because God didn't sit down with the fountain pen and write the Bible. The yeah. Bible's the most, the Bible's the most circulated book in the entire world. Uh, you gotta, I would say at the very least, you should be using some discernment and no matter what, whether it's God that wrote the Bible, the devil that wrote the Bible, the Vatican AI of robot terminator from the past, whatever you think wrote the Bible, that's all cool. But did it change? It did change. So you should be not gatekeeping that you should be dealing with that. And yeah. maybe the Bible's changed because you idolize the Bible. And that's why I don't think it is Satan. I think it's the creator showing you something. And that's why there's some of these messages. So, Yeah, exactly. And because the Bible can be so misinterpreted and there's so many different interpretations out there. Um, just for example, um, 
I think it might have been Fortune to St. Germain, who's been on the Crow Triple Seven podcast a few times. He pointed out um, he's, he's very um, knowledgeable about um, a lot of things. But um, so, um, but anyway, he spoke about the beginning of the Bible, like in um, Genesis, where it says in the beginning. And he says, actually, when it was translated, it actually is in a, I think it's either in a beginning or in any beginning. I can't remember. It's and this mm-hmm. isn't a Mandela effect. I'm not saying it's changed. All I'm saying is he said he's gone back to the the original. Yeah, you're saying that's an yeah. actual translation issue. Yeah, yeah, that's a translate. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, it actually means in a beginning or in any beginning, which to me says that there isn't just the beginning. There's many cycles. There's many beginnings. There's many ends. We're on a perpetual cycle, a perpetual, you know, loop or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But that's so just an people, aside. The people that won't look at the Mandela effect because they think that it's like the devil attacking. It's like in a, they don't think it's like happening. Some people like this, people that think it's not happening. But the fact that people are claiming it's happening is the devil's attack on scripture. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. that's a psyop. It's not happening. That's a trick of the devil to make you think the Bible's changing. Yeah. If that's how you have to think and you can't actually look at it, honestly, you are really, really brainwashed. And I'm yeah. sorry. And the, the indoctrination has worked really well on you. And I don't hate you for it. I hope you can come out of it. I'm glad I'm not brainwashed in that way. Yeah. I deal with the reality of the situation. I don't care what different truth groups or religions or or anybody uh, says, like, as far as like what I am experiencing. I know what I'm experiencing. I know what's happening. I know this changes in this place. You're not going to shut down the conversation. This is the conversation that needs to be had. And we're only going to get louder and louder. And in fact, Amanda, I mean, these are some of the most interesting conversations. When I talk to people like you or Nathan or uh, all the myriad of guests I have on my show and the roundtables, sometimes I stop and think or even say it during the show and we're having these really deep talks. And I'm like, can you imagine that the majority of like the so-called truth community can't even talk about this stuff? Like they can't even have this type of conversation. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. They're so limited um, in their thinking and it's just, yeah, I don't even know how they could call themselves truthers. But then, like you said earlier, that label has um, taken on, you know, different connotations in recent times. And, you know, even the word truth these days seems to be a dirty word. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did, like, I, like I said earlier, to get back to it a little, you know, it's, it's I've had up and, ups and downs with the whole community idea. And, and right now I um, – and I'm going to a big – Camp and meet up with a bunch of uh, flat earthers and truthers in like three weeks. Um, but as far as like on the internet and like groups and all the YouTube chats, I don't really f with any of that anymore. Yeah. Um, because I think most most people are stupid, right? I know a few really smart people, and I'm not saying I'm the smartest of that bunch. Um, but most of the people are stupid. Um, and they just share stuff with no discernment. They promote fear. They don't fact check things. They reshare AI generated photos and say that they're this and say that they're that, you know? Um, And it's just, I can't be associated with that. And I have a much bigger mind and bigger picture to look at here. And um, I'm glad that I'm focusing on the Mandela effect. Although, you know, when 2020 happened, you know, although I had avoided that type of stuff for years, it was so big that I knew I needed to go back to that and, and, and do all that. And if I get in that situation again, I will do that as well. And I talk to people about that. But for me and being the voice that I have right now, I know that I'm one of the uh, definitely one of the more prominent voices speaking about it. Um, I'm going to continue talking about this. Like this is the most fascinating thing ever. And yep. we, should, we should really be paying attention to this. You know, yep. I mean, I don't know how this doesn't fascinate people. This is the, it's so fascinating to me and all this other stuff was fascinating to me, but this is like, and yeah. it doesn't, it's, Crazy. And that's what boggles my mind too, because it's human nature to be curious. And I always thought that everyone loves a good mystery and likes to solve things and delve into things and try and work things out. And as you say, this is the biggest thing, you know, the fact that our reality is actually literally changing in front of our eyes. Um, and I've heard some people say that they've looked at 
something in a book one minute and looked away and looked back and it's it's literally changed in front of their eyes. So I'm not just saying that figuratively, I mean it literally. So how people can't be even slightly interested and can just shut it down or shut it away, I don't know. It's just fear. It's um, that the NPC, that, you know, there could be a numerous, numerous different reasons as to why people just can't open their minds to it. Yeah. And, and at this point, like, so I was really focused on trying to get everybody to see it. And I, I still am very driven by that. But as far as trying to get these big name people to see it and whatnot, I, I'm completely done with it. Of, of yeah. course, when people send me things, I'll point it out on a show sometimes or whatever. But um, but I, I, I feel better about just disconnecting from these people and leaving them behind. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that they're not doing anything good. It doesn't mean that at all. A lot of people are doing good things yeah. and helping wake people up to other things. But for me, where my mind's at and where my happiness is at and what I want to focus on, I want to focus on this fluid reality. I want to focus on me. Uh, I'm starting my like new life up here by the lake and I got my bartending thing going and I'm meeting all these people and I'm talking to people about stuff and about truth and, and, um, and I'm happy and, and, you know, taking my trips to California. I mean, it, it's been life changing for me. I'm going to hopefully continue doing that um, and just live a happy life and, and not get mucked down by all that crap. I know all that that's fake. And when something big enough comes that people are all going to fall for it, like 2020, I'll get yeah. involved. But for right now I'm going to, I'm going to focus on, on this, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you've got family now that, are on board with this too. Your mum often tunes into your show. And did you say recently one of your cousins has started to ask or shown some interest? Was oh yeah. yeah, 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 definitely asking questions. Definitely thinks the uh, thing of twenty twenty is nonsense. Yeah, I think he's to the point where he thinks it's complete nonsense and um, not just some overreach. Although he still buys into the politics and Trump, and so he's part of the way there though. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think what happened four years ago was a blessing in disguise, even though at the time it was very hard to go through that, especially for people that lost people. Like my dad passed away in April of 2020 and he'd had, um, he'd been battling with emphysema for many years. So it was nothing related to anything. And they hadn't even brought out the, you know what yet it was in the early days, just a few weeks after um, it, it, became apparent what they were doing but anyway we couldn't get down there they wouldn't let us they'd shut down all the airports I even wrote to the local premier uh, which in in American terms would be like the governor of the state I wrote to the premier of um, our state in Queensland and the Tasmanian premier I got a, um, a letter back from the Tasmanian one it was just a letter of um, you know saying that we've received your mail and we will be in touch soon didn't hear another word didn't hear anything from the Queensland Premier and so it took us all of that year before we could get down we got down in um, December to finally have my father's um, funeral service <clears throat> so um, I mean obviously he was cremated before then we, we didn't wait a whole year to do that my stepmother organized that but to actually you know go down and be with her and and have family and and friends to to gather it was really difficult but having said that I think it was also the biggest eye-opener and it was the biggest um, kick up the bum that we needed on a collective level to really see what's going on in the world and it has woken up so many people yeah there are still a lot of people out there that we call the normies that are still walking around with face snappies on and things like that but so many more people have woken up in the last four years because I've been aware of a lot of things probably since about 2008 2009 when I started to really look at things like the financial system and I came across the the original first Zeitgeist movie and started looking into different things then. Um, But I couldn't even talk to people back then about stuff. They think you were an absolute nutbag. Whereas now more and more people are aware of what's going on. So it it was definitely a blessing. Yeah. 
It turned into such a clown show. I thought that definitely was more clownish than any of the other stuff they pulled. And I know that we're getting more aware, so we see it more. But it was definitely way more over the top this time around with this thing. Yeah. Yeah. What I what I think um, what I like to do uh, a lot is talk to people when I'm out. I mean, I don't overdo it. I don't stand on the corner and like do that type of activism. But I, like I do, do a lot of videos on the street. I approach people and I talk to them about this stuff. And uh, what, what I find is, you know, like, we're going to put this video on your channel and then, you know, later on we'll put it on my channel and, you know, a few thousand people might see it or whatever. And we all know that there's communities and chats and people we can talk to about this. Most of these people out there don't know that, mm. but they actually, some of them do think like us. Yeah. So you have to, this is what I do. So when I, when I get into a conversation about people, whether it's about NASA or the Mandela effect Or, uh, you know, September doesn't come up too much anymore, but the thing of the last four years, certainly, um, when that comes up, if they start to resonate with some things I'm saying, um, and cause I don't just pass out my card or leave them, but if I feel that they're starting to resonate, I'll pull out my card and I'll, I'll first thing I'll say to them um, when I give them the card, because I'm the, usually I'm telling them to not live in fear for whatever reason, I'll be like, and by the way, you know, when I do these shows, There's 100, 200 people in the chat and you can call in and like we do that all the time and been doing it for years. So I let them know that there's a lot of people that are thinking like this. It's not necessarily that they're afraid to say anything. They just they don't have anybody to say it to. Yeah. They don't think there's other people that think like them. They already got naysayed by their wife at home or whatever, and they don't want to bring it up anymore. But there are people you can actually talk to, and there's tons of us, you know? So I make yeah. sure I let people do that. It's not, like, topic-specific or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, other things that interest me is the paranormal. You brought up NDEs and stuff like that. And that all, for me, that's more of stuff that I tend to would tend to want to look at and poke around at. as well as this, you know, not just Mandela effect, try and figure this reality out. I'm all set with looking at the physical deceptions. I have no reason to, and I have enough knowledge with it, right? And enough experience with the really big ones, the, the, the two events we keep bringing up, especially the current, most current one and me doing all the stuff I did out and talking to people. Like I can use those experiences to wake people up in conversations. I don't need to look at any other ones, you know? Yeah. I can tell you the moon landing is fake and break it down. I can tell you the last four years is not to, to break it down. And I can get those messages out, but I don't need to focus my energy on any of that, you know? And, and I I made a lot of sacrifices with my personal life and disconnected from some people and just sat in my room and researching. And I owe myself now to get back on track and put myself ahead and, and be yeah. happy first. Yep, you even lost some family too, didn't you, because of your research? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, you, you just plant seeds and some people are never going to get it anyway in this life. So, yeah, there's just different levels, I think. Some come in at kindergarten level and some come in at university level. And it's not to say that the people that are on kindergarten level are any less than us. It's just that they're at their level and eventually they will be, you know, on um, the same, you know, trajectory as us and, and be at the university level. Uh, but they're just, their soul is... chosen to come to learn different lessons so I guess when you look at it spiritually that's how I get my head around why some people can't see it or, or won't ever be able to see it in this particular lifetime because it's not what their soul is here to do so Yeah, I think it's like the, some people have a governor in them almost that will like block them uh, spiritually, you know, from seeing the supernatural, no matter what, no matter how obvious it is, no matter how much you show it, no matter how much even, I think because I know that a lot of them uh, actually do know that this has taken place. But I, like my 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 thing is out of the people that's been presented to a lot, eight out of 10 of the people that deny it do know that it's real. And there's different motives for why they would deny it, right? And I think, um, but I think a lot of them, like they recognize it, but they can't, they just can't go any further with it. They can't talk about it. They can't go any further with it. They're, they're just like spiritually shut down inside from doing that. And it makes me wonder, are they the same humans as us? If you yeah. cut them open with a doctor, I'm sure they're going to look the same, but is their soul the same? Yeah. Is there something different? Yeah. Even if it's just that one modification, There you are. You're there. You're doing your thing, but you can uh, never see the supernatural and step outside that physical realm. You are an NPC until I say otherwise.
Yeah, yeah. And one thing I like what you do with taking it to the streets, so to speak, or, you know, at your work and, and places that you are, like when you're over in California and stuff, and planting these seeds is because there, I think there are a um, a group of people that don't know about it because they just have never been made aware of it. I mean, I know a few people like that, that they're not big on, um, you know, internet or, you know, that, like my husband, for instance, he... Um, he doesn't know how to use a computer. He doesn't have a smartphone. He's what he calls old school or analog. He likes to call himself Mr. Analog. <laughs> and um, he'd still have the old Nokia phone if he could get away with it, but they took that away from us a couple of years ago. But, um, yeah, so unless I actually bring things to him, he wouldn't have had a clue. He's open to it now and he can see and he understands and he's on board with it. But there are a lot of people out there like that too. I th Well, not a lot, but there are a certain percentage of people that just they're going about their lives. They're, they've got a family to feed. They've got a mortgage to keep the roof over their head. They're going to work. They might take the kids to, you know, a football game on the weekend or, you know, kid to basketball or something like that. But they're not reading books, they're not looking at TV or movies or they're not aware of these changes. They don't really look at um, labels in supermarket, um, you know, shops um, with yeah. a keen eye. They just grab it and they're just almost in automatic pilot, I guess is what I'm saying. They're yeah. going there through are, There own. are new changes though and there are changes for the kids now and changes in the cartoons and video games and the kids are talking about it. Yeah. But the problem is... You know, they get their waters muddied with TikTok, which I think is a terrible platform. And it spreads tons of disinformation, particularly about the Mandela effect with fake residue recirculating, fake viral videos and stuff that's been going around for years. And yeah. uh, I hate TikTok. I really hate what TikTok has done to truth videos. It's really taken the wind out of a lot of it, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. And I also think that whole, because isn't TikTok one of those ones too, where it's it's a bit like um, Snapchat at you can only do shorts. There's only short videos. It was 60 seconds, but you can do 10 minutes, but that's all you can do. And they make live streaming the absolute hardest thing ever. I can't connect my desktop to it. You can only live stream from the phone, basically. And yeah. uh, if you do live stream from the phone, it doesn't save. It just disappears after. So there's no point in me being on there unless yeah. I do a video it happens to be under 10 minutes, and then I'll put it up there, you know? Yeah. Which happens once in a great while, but normally I'm talking for five hours. Yeah, yeah, because that's something I've noticed with the, the younger generation, but even some, you know, older people too that um, are getting into things like TikTok or Snapchat and things like that. And it's just the way the world is going at the moment with everything um, being so fast-paced. People don't have the patience really to sit and yeah. watch something that's even half an hour well, long, yeah. let alone two or it's four. Training, it's training there. It's bringing their attention span down and down. It's just contributing to that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been on here for a and, while, and I guess you're probably getting tired because you not long got home from work when we jumped on. So is there anything else you want to talk about briefly before we wind it up, and then I'll get you to give everybody your um, – information where they can find you and put out your email if you want but i will drop all that in the links in the description box yeah no other than that i just uh, tell people what they could me tell people what they can expect on my channel I, I live stream i'm working a little more now you know i used to do it several times a week i'm live streaming probably twice a week, week right now sometimes three times um and uh, when I live stream, I go live for several hours. Sometimes I'm solo. Sometimes I'll bring guests on. Some shows I'll open the phones. Um, and I also do uh, shows where I interview people, much like this show was today. It's called My Awakening. And I've interviewed 80-something people, 90 people, and their whole personal journey uh, from when they were young all the way up to the current and all the things they like to get into. I suggest people check that out. All the stuff I did during the last four years, uh, obviously, YouTube takes stuff like that down. But if you go to my Odyssey channel, and we'll give the links in a minute, uh, my Odyssey channel has over 2,000 videos, whereas my YouTube has 1,500 because they've taken five, 600 videos of my down. But all my 9-11, all my stuff for the last four years, uh, you, in fact, my stuff to do with that day in September is listed all chronologically. All the interviews I've done from 2010 forward uh, are listed in a list like that. I have a list of Mandela interviews as well um you got mandela shorts 
I got Mandela shortlist, which is one of my key, part of my key playlist, which is 124 videos as of right now on uh, April 4th, 2024. It's basically my biggest Mandela effects and me breaking one down in each video, showing the residue, explaining it. And there's just so many, we, there's so many huge ones we didn't even get into tonight. Take a look at that list is a great place to start. If you go yeah. to my YouTube channel, you just scroll down, there'll be the dose of reality show list where I just put all the videos on there. Um, and newest ones are pretty much near the top. I reorganize it a little here and there, but the next list down is Mandela Effect short videos. Uh, definitely check that out for more information on that. Brian S. Stavely um, should find me on every platform. Dose of reality, if you have a hard time remembering, but the username is Brian S. Stavely uh, on every platform. I did add dose of reality into the title on some of my YouTube channels, but if you search my name, you should find it or search my name with Mandela Effect. I'm on uh, YouTube is where the biggest crowd will be, but I'm also on Rumble, Rockfin, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, sometimes D Live, and I upload to BitChute and Odyssey. And you can also find all my old podcasts on my website, therealnewsonline.com. And if you go to therealnewsonline.com and click my links, you can find everything else for me. If you have trouble, you can find all my YouTube channels there platform, social media, email, all in one spot, therealnewsonline.com. Click my links. And we also just recently completed what I call Mandela Effect Master List. People have been asking us to make a list, like a legitimate list uh, for the last few years. It's a lot of work because I don't want to put stuff on there that's not rock solid. But yep. we came up with the list after a long time. We worked on it for like a year. And I have a list of about 200 Mandela effects. I got 124 videos, but I got a list of about 200 alphabetical order categorized on my website. It's titled Mandela Effect Master List, therealnewsonline.com. Great. All right. So as I said, I'll put all the links in the description anyway um, for people. And, um, yeah, I just want to thank you for coming on today to the um, Caravan of Consciousness podcast. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure and hopefully it'll um, open up a few more eyes and plant a few more seeds and uh, yeah, help, help people to step out of the fear. Yeah. It's so. always good talking with you. And um, I have been working a lot lately, so the shows have been less frequent, but we will do another round table. Not too long. Yeah. It'll probably be a month or two, but we'll get it done. For yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. All right. No worries. All right. Thanks. So thanks everyone for watching Caravan of Consciousness. This is episode 11 with Brian S. Staverly. So take care, everyone. Until next time. Okay.